One fine day in the train station, citizens were busy on their own. Some are waiting for their stop and some just wanted to cross the train trail. The lights turn green. It's a cue for the people to cross the train trail and the first one to cross is the woman with her baby. As they crossed, the train suddenly had a malfunction on its brakes so that it wouldn't stop running. The train lost its controls that the passengers start jumping off the train and screams for help. People cannot hear the train engineer but observe that the train won't stop. They panicked and immediately ran away from the trail, and everyone yelled and screamed to run so that people near the trail were aware of the danger. The woman panics while pulling her baby's stroll as hard as she can, she begs for help. But people can't do anything about it but yell that she must get away. They want to help the mother but seem like they don't want to die from a horrendous accident. Then a mysterious man behind the crowd instantly disappeared out of nowhere. The mysterious man surprisingly stood on the trail to save the crying mother trying her best to protect her baby. The mysterious man blocked the train with his bare hands. That the cars start crashing each other from the mysterious man's unbelievable strength. The mother heard a crash and felt a strong wind while holding her baby thinking that this could be the last breath of her and her child. The mother peeked and was speechless to see that she and her baby is okay and was saved from a horrible accident. He saw a man standing in front of her. The mysterious man helped the mother to stand up and check up on her if she's alright. The mother was mesmerized and thankful. As the mother stands up while holding her baby, both the mother and child backs down like they saw something horrifying. Turns out the mysterious man has a face of a skull. The mother and child were terrified thinking that death has come for them. If you found this video interesting don't forget to like comment and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. In the mysterious man's place, he woke up to start his daily routine. His name is Zombie. Zom from Zombie and Bai from Zombie. Apparently, he doesn't know his real name. He doesn't know how old he is nor when did he die. But even though he looks scary and looked like death, he has a dream. He dreamed that he could become friends with the humans. He dreamed that one day he wouldn't be discriminated against and ostracized by people. With his dream in mind, Zombie continued to improve himself although it is impossible with his appearance. But Zombie believed that as long as he works hard, he will succeed. He believes that to make his dreams possible he has to help countless humans just by doing a lot of heroic acts like he did on the train trail. Like one time when a plane was about to crash a football stadium, he carries the weight of the plane on his shoulders to avoid crash, but people was distracted to see Zombie's good deed because of his looks. And also, that one time when a fire occurs in a condominium, Parents were crying for help that her children are still inside the building. Zombie saved the kids and as for the firefighter and the parents, they had the same reaction as the people in the football stadium because of Zombie's looks. Back to Zombie's daily routine, he isn't actually originally strong as he remembers. Before Zombie became the way he is, on one summer a zombie outbreak caused an apocalypse and the city looks severely polluted. Zombie was studying in school at that time. But since the outbreak happened too suddenly, Zombie didn't get the chance to escape and got bit. Zombie then became an ordinary zombie. A completely ordinary zombie. The ones people see in the mob, wandering around and don't have a mind of its own and are always hungry for human meat and blood. Until one day, humans began to appear. The humans didn't talk reason. It appears that an army and survivalist pointed a bunch of guns and missiles to a mob of zombies. Not only did the humans burn the zombies for fuel, but the Humas also created a perpetual energy machine by exploiting the zombies. The zombies became the source of electricity. Zombie didn't know why the zombies want to eat humans or why do humans want to kill zombie. Back then, in order for zombie to survive he must change his lifestyle. Zombie began training from that day on. He lifted weights, ran, swam and jumped around every day. An independent life starts with their own efforts. Zombie didn't eat meat and only ate protein powder for three meals a day. Although Zombie was tired, he continued to train even at night. Until one day, Zombie became strong and buffed, he was almost invincible. After Zombie obtained both power and knowledge, he decided to live in the budding human society. He continuously helped them to change humans' perception of Zombie. Zombie wanted to live as a civilized, law-abiding, and good Zombie. Back to Zombie's daily routine. It appears that he ran out of food as he opened the fridge and thought of shopping to stack his fridge. One sunny day, in the house supermarket where Zombie buys his food. The nice, lovely cashier asks Zombie if he's uncomfortable wearing a mask all day. It seems like they have no idea with Zombie's identity. The cashier ordered the employees to help Zombie move items onto the truck. It appears that Zombie didn't just buy dozens of eggs but a whole stock like he owns an egg market. Zombie's minding his own lovely day buying a large number of eggs while being stalked by two guys behind the bush. The two men sulks with their intention to take Zombie's mask off out of their curiosity to see who's under it. 
The stalkers observed Zombie thoroughly even after Zombie finished his errands. Zombie frowns as he stares at the piece of paper he's holding. It appears that the wanted man in the poster is someone he knew named Agu. The poster indicates that Agu's danger level is SSS it means he's somewhat an S-tier zombie or should we say a boss level zombie. His bounty is 9,999,226 yen. Back at the stalkers, it looks like they started searching and stalked zombie when he lifted an entire airplane in the football field before. The cameraman had doubts that they might have been scammed by the media. The other guy with a mustache just agrees with the cameraman although he's still focused on zombie like he couldn't get his eyes off him. But the guy with the mustache acknowledged the cameraman all of a sudden and thought of the possibility that the media might be overhyping it. So even if the chances were wrong or not, the stalkers took a risk and followed zombie to find out and feed their curiosity. The stalkers distracted by talking to each other, and when they get back on their job, their eyes were about to pop in shock. Witnessing zombie's super strength as he lifts up the truck so easily. The ground cracked as he lifts off flying with the truck like he's Superman. The stalker stares at the blue sky in shock and confused at the same time when Zombie flew away with the truck. Zombie flew so high that he went outer space and even the astronauts inside the spaceship were confused. In an abandoned place somewhat restricted, has a citizen of zombies that lives there. But it appears that they have a mind of their own, they're not a typical brain-dead zombie. They have feelings and they don't speak gibberish. In the abandoned city, the zombies were hungry so that a child zombie complained about his hunger to his mother, but the mother had no choice but to tell her son to endure it for a while. That night, zombie appears in the night sky of the abandoned city all of a sudden with the truck he bought earlier in the supermarket. Zombie landed on his feet with the truck. The citizen of zombies got his attention and calls him the king of their own kind. A child nervously suggests that their majesty zombie should have just drove the truck to their abandoned city just like how the humans do. But Zombie replied that he doesn't have a driver's license, and the kids looked like they just gained knowledge about the outside world. The abandoned place is a city that Zombie conquered. It's far far away from the prying eyes of the humans. Zombie ordered all of his kind in the abandoned place to use egg to replace the protein they get from eating human flesh. The citizens of Zombies began to feast on the eggs that Zombie bought. Then Zombie asked the child about Agu and the rest's whereabouts. The child pointed at the hotel's main of the abandoned city. Zombie then went inside the hotel's main to meet the rest of the zombies who appeared to be powerful like Zombie. The zombie met with his kind who seems to be one of the leaders in their town. They looked like mythical high-level and intimidating creatures. They are Lang, Fur, Agan, Agu the guy in the wanted poster that Zombie saw earlier, Varmint and Blackie. They equally have a boss-level zombie with a danger level of SSS. A level considered to be an S-tier level, or should we say they are seen as the boss zombie. Zombie entered the room. He appeared to be the smallest kind among them but he was treated with respect as they call him their majesty. Zombie then walked past them with disappointment for Agu who committed a heinous crime against human. Agu apologizes since he loses his control whenever he sees a human being like a predator hunting its prey. Zombie sat on the couch but looked like a king who sat on their throne casually. Zombie's intention for his arrival is to not only feed his people but to also hear some reports from his henchmen. Blackie then comes forward to report some issues he gathered that they are steadily increasing their numbers, but to hide from the humans, they had to change their base multiple times. Varmint cuts the conversation and adds his vicious determinate intention to just battle the humans then reasoned out that his chainsaw has begun to rust from not having fresh blood for so long. Zombie lectures Varmint to not be naive since humans can be terrifying. The boss zombies were busy with their meeting until they heard a plane flying near their place. The plane appears to be an air force, with a hot lady waiting inside who has motives for the abandoned city. Meanwhile in the air force plane, the woman who gives the impression of a leader in their political organization observes their data statistics. As she looked at the data board, her colleagues informed her that all signals are normal and clear and for the equipment, it's ready to go. She then asked for the payload. The payload appears to be a huge bomb. The armed nuclear warhead set to donate in 20 minutes that's going to be dropped in the abandoned city. The woman seemed satisfied to think they're about to bomb the abandoned city. And at the same, she's furious and races towards every zombie looking like she has traumatic experience with it. While the Air Force waits for the huge nuclear warhead to donate, the boss zombies already sense their appearance above. Varmint being naive suggests that he'll go and cut the humans up. But Zombie acts like a leader and doesn't let Varmint go because he's aware that Varmint will lose control as soon as he has contact with the human. Instead, he ordered the other boss zombies to evacuate. Zombie being a robust leader insists that he'll take care of the humans for his own kind. 
It happens to be that not only a plane plans to wipe out the citizens of the abandoned city, but there are also ground units who's about to fire their guns at every zombie they see. While the armies were coming closer to the abandoned city, Zombie ordered his henchmen that they must evacuate and save the civilians for 20 minutes like he's aware and seen the chaos before. The organization looks really prepared. They sent not only a plane and a ground unit but also a skilled person who seemed to be professional in combat. The highly skilled person is hungry to annihilate every zombie he sees. He has confidence to cut down on everyone who goes in his way. The expression of the zombie citizen is not like the other or is usually seen because instead, the zombies feared the humans. Even though they're all rotting and physically dead that became mutant monsters, they still want to live and run as fast as they can to evacuate the place. Meanwhile in the plane, there are also a guy who looks like a mad scientist observing the data statistics. The mad scientist who appears to be named Fei was informed by his colleague that the Extraordinaries Academy found the zombies first. The Extraordinaries Academy are the people who shows up with an air force and ground unit. With that information, Fei smirks and rapidly pushes the red button and turns out that he has an inhumane experiment to use human beings as bait to the zombies. The humans inside the cage were screaming for help with terror in their eyes trying to be heard that they never signed up in that situation. The cage full of human beings was dropped and the zombies ambushed the cage. As the humans were being ambushed, the ground unit Tima was informed that the other team had detected a human life and ordered Tima to proceed to the mark location to save the caged humans. The armies placed their machine gun on ends of the road in places where the zombies could escape and began shooting at the zombies. But as they shoot, they realize that the zombies can't die. The zombie child held his sibling tight as they were being killed. But their majesty and leader zombie blocked the bullets to save the zombie child and his sibling. But one soldier believes that there's no such thing as an unkillable zombie, and even as there is one, that is only because they aren't using enough firepower. He did not hesitate to shoot his rocket launcher to kill the zombie. As he launched the weapon he used, it creates an explosion. But then interrupted with his fellow man that the zombie he shoots was actually seen by the human society as the extraordinary who has been helping people. He looked at the paper with information about the extraordinary and it was zombie who's famous for always wearing a zombie mask. The soldier who uses the rocket launcher was too stunned that he shoots the wrong target out of his anger towards zombie. Zombie was even after the explosion and stands perfectly still and awaits to save everyone he can. Back in the Air Force, where the skilled man is about to dive in the sky was informed that a boss zombie has been detected in Zone B. He instantly dives from the plane without hesitation and fearless. Back to the mad scientist. Fei and his colleague backed up the army. Both of the scientists noticed that the zombie bosses saved almost all the zombie civilians as they looked at the data of the abandoned city. They realized they might have underestimated the zombies who had a mind of their own. That's when Fei cues his colleague to commit an inhumane act. To drop a bunch of humans in a cage to use as a bait. The zombie civilians ambushed the caged humans since they hadn't consumed human protein for a long time. It's like they relapsed as soon as they sensed a human being. One zombie was so deprived and craves for human flesh for a long time that he began to be transformed into a huge mutant zombie. The mutant zombie growls so loud that zombie got his attention. It turns out, the mutant zombie was the boss zombie the army detected in Zone B. While the skilled combat man dove into the Zone B. The other team who felt dumbfounded after wrongfully shot zombie who humans recognized as the extraordinary was also informed of the situation as Zone B. They immediately responded that they're on their way. But their squad leader who shot zombie carries the weight of shooting the wrong target that he panics and ran fast to zombie. The squad leader thought he severely injured zombie that he carries zombie and thought of saving his life. The squad leader's team thinks he's making another idiotic move. The squad leader rushly threw zombie in their vehicle and ordered his team to drive as fast as they can with his conscience of almost killing an innocent person bothers his mind. The squad leader's team just went with the flow and followed their squad leader's order since they have no other choice. The red-haired girl still thinks zombie's wearing a mask and began to be curious about zombie's identity. She's curious on what could be the reason for zombie wearing a mask every day. Zombie just nervously laughed since he wasn't really wearing a mask, it's just his bare face. In Zone B, a soldier team fighting the boss zombie kept thinking on how they could defeat it with the zombie who suddenly became a mutant and insanely strong. The boss zombie lifts a bus while growling like a homicidal monster who craves for the soldier team's flesh. The boss monster then threw the bus. But as the bus flew, the academy's swordsmanship clubs named Marshall, the skilled man in combat arrived and sliced the bus in half. The soldier team cheered for Marshall and felt certain that they will win with Marshall on their side. Marshall is in his position waiting for the boss zombie's next attack, and as he waits, he ordered the soldier team to save the human civilians and immediately evacuate. 
Marshall is confident to defeat the boss zombie. On the other side were the squad leader and his team were helping the human civilians to evacuate. While they were saving the human civilians they also talked about the other team's situation. The squad leader asked the boss zombie's whereabouts and his team mentioned that Marhal already arrived and intercepted it. They were all calmed when they heard Marshall is already fighting the boss zombie since he's the kind of person who shouldn't be underestimated. Zombie appears to be with them since he was dragged by the squad leader. He cannot stay still because the boss zombie everyone they're talking about seems to be someone he also knew named Little Nine. The red-haired girl who's busy with her task helping people sense that Zombie already left the place and wondered where he could have gone. Back in Zone B where Marshall fights a boss zombie, he stares at the zombie and empathizes with it. He looked them in the eye and what Marshall saw was a human being trapped in a rotting body. He then asked the zombie if they were hurt. The terrifying boss zombie growls again. The boss zombie proceeds to attack Marshall like a predator. As for Marshall who's known as a skilled swordsman, he opened his katana and slid through the boss zombie. It was so fast that no human being could see that Marshall swung his sword. As he sliced through the boss zombie, he didn't just think of just killing it, but rather helped them escape their rotting bodies. The boss zombie didn't move for a second then its body began to spread apart in pieces since he was sliced by a very skilled swordsman Marshall. Marshall packs up and before he walks away, he respectfully prays for his opponent to rest in peace. Marshall was about to go until he notices another zombie. It was zombie, grieving to a zombie that Marshall killed. Zombie was staring at the sliced dead corpse speechless. Back in the Air Force, they received a report that Marshall already defeated the boss zombie. They all cheered for Marshall. Their president in the Air Force ordered her team to record the event as part of the contribution. Back in Zone B, Zombie who grieves for his friend apologizes that they cannot control themselves and it's no one's fault. Marshall then realized that Zombie is one of the zombies. He immediately swung his sword while yelling that all zombies must die. Back in the Air Force while Marshall picks a fight with Zombie, the team detected another boss-level zombie. They were so calm and overestimated Marshall that they thought Marshall will kill the boss zombie in a second. The girl who's observing the data felt uneasy as the data showed that the fight between Marshall and Zombie is already done in a second, but Marshall is the one who's already gone. Back in Zone B where Marshall is hanging on the pole and severely injured because of Zombie. Zombie may seem calm, but he still grieves for his friend that was sliced into pieces. Zombie didn't immediately kill Marshall but puts him in a very critical condition. The team on the Air Force began to panic as soon as they saw their data showing Marshall's life signal is almost completely gone by suffering a critical damage. On the other hand, they were worried that they haven't evacuated all the human civilians yet. The president in the team was pissed off that she couldn't even say one word to what happened on Marshall. The event was too stressful for her especially her racism towards the zombie. She then disappeared on the plane and immediately jumped off to help the ground units to defeat the zombie. The team on the plane warns their president that they must observe how strong the zombie was first as she rushes down to fight a boss-level zombie. The president who jumped off carries her sword with her. As she goes down, she chants the name of her move called White Blade Cleave while zombies all confused that a woman suddenly appeared on the sky like a shooting star. When the president swung her sword, it completely broke into pieces as soon as it hits zombie. The president was in awe to witness zombie's invincibility. While the president attempted to fight zombie, she was being constantly warned by her team that she can't just charge without telling them. They won't be able to send support to their president who acts reckless. The president stands on her feet as she observes her opponent, and it seems that she must not underestimate it, or she'll end up like Marshall. Zombie apologized for putting Marshall in a very critical condition. Zombie was worried to be hated by humans since he worked so hard to be loved and accepted by the human society. The president then realized that Zombie must be some kind of mutant or a variant. She reaches her other sword to fight him once again with her heart filled with hatred for the zombie. The president chants her move again with her powerful sword named Enhanced Blade. But zombie just wanted to talk first and wanted to clear things up. The president ran through to hit zombie, but zombie dodged it. The president instantly backs away to do her next move called Red Blade Cleave. When the president made her move, the poles and other infrastructure was cut in half and as for zombie, he just bends over to dodge the powerful attack of the president. The president was so stressed and irritated with Zombie's skill and ability. She badly wanted to kill him by her hands, but she can't. The other team saved Marshall. Due to his critical condition he began to speak gibberish while the soldier was trying his best to comfort him. The other team on the Air Force were concerned for their president that they repeatedly warned her that the human civilians have been evacuated and she must retreat in an instant. Meanwhile on Zone B, both Zombie and the president are running around. Zombie seems to be not wasting his time since he must save others before the organization bombed the city. 
The president, on the other hand, forgot the main mission to evacuate the civilians because of her severe hatred of the zombie. She wanted to kill zombie so bad not just because zombie gave an injury to one of her team, it's just pure hatred. The president then asked why zombie would run away in the middle of their battle that she craves so much. Zombie who has other important things to do be chilling fly and swinging around away from the president. He responded that there's no way he would stop running away since the president's murderous intention is to cut him in half. The president intends her power by using Lado Level 2. A Lado Level 2 is inspired by the Japanese art of drawing, attack, then sheathing the blade again in successive order. With her Lado Level 2, she was also assisted by her boots with advanced technology that has the same power of a rocket. She then launched herself to caught up with Zombie. As the president finally caught up with Zombie, she swung her sword and successfully hit Zombie and knocked him on the ground. The president believes that she successfully eliminated her target with satisfaction on her face. The president is now content that she finally eliminates Zombie and proceeds to order her team to lower the plane's altitude to pick her up. Back at the mad scientist, Faye was informed by his partner that the human civilians they purr in a cage to be eaten alive were all safe. Faye then remembered that they have a spy who works with the organization that Faye plans to sabotage. The human civilians cheered and jumped around to be saved by the soldiers. The Air Force who carries a nuke, one of their pilots who works with Fayak. Uh, the spy was seen by the co-pilot that he looks unusual with the handles and button of the plane. The spy pushes the red button all of a sudden. That it triggers the nuke to launch at the civilians. The nuke that could explode and destroy the whole city was then released. The whole team who has no idea that they have been sabotaged celebrates hopes to see their family and home after they saved all the human civilians as their main mission. The pilots yelled and instantly warned everyone to not celebrate yet for the reason that there's a traitor among them and the nuke has already been dropped. Everyone's bewildered and as they realized what's going on they panicked at once. Just when the president thought that there's nothing to worry about anymore, stress spread all over her mind when she heard the appalling news and her team reported that an enemy spy has infiltrated them and has dropped the nuclear warhead. The president at the moment gazes at the sky as she perceived the situation. And what the president saw is a nuke that no less a minute will explode the entire city. The president's team was alerted to prepare for the turbulence. They are going to open the cabin doors and will lower the altitude so the president could get in. But to make it possible for them to escape the explosion, the president must jump by using Booster, the one she used to catch Zombie. The president tried her best to escape, while her team kept warning her that she must be on board in an instant. But the president's leg booster did not work and had regrets in her eyes as she realized the time she wasted when she jumped off the plane and ran around to chase Zom when she could have just stayed on the plane and stick with giving orders to her team. She has no idea what to do after using all the leg booster's power. She then felt like an idiot for not charging the leg booster before she even headed out for the mission. She turned on her left side when she sensed like she's being watched. She saw Zombie staring directly at her and seemed to be eavesdropping the whole time she's talking to herself. Zombie grabbed her and spins the president all around but not for a sweet revenge but to help her get on a plane. By tossing her, the president screamed as she was thrown like a baseball. She luckily got inside the plane and landed on her feet. The president's team was worried and assisted her while she took a deep breath. Instead of being thankful, she was still pissed off by the fact that Zombie's still alive. The nuke is about to land on the city while Zombie on the ground thought of stopping it before it destroys the abandoned city that could possibly kill all the zombie civilians. Zombie huffed and broke the ground as he blasts off. He flew as fast as a rocket. He launched himself to stop the nuke. When he finally approached the nuke, he used only his bare hand. He called his attack the barehanded nuclear warhead catch like he invented it not long ago. Everyone in the organization including the mad scientist witnessed Zombie's heroic act. And it creates a huge explosion in the sky. The president couldn't believe her eyes as she witnessed that a mutant could possibly be that strong and barehandedly stop the nuke to explode in the city. Zombie stood on the ground after that, he was not harmed nor injured. The only thing that ripped apart from him were his clothes and made his butt itchy. Meanwhile in the mad scientist's plane after the explosion, Faye made up his mind to pack things up and leave for now. His partner resists by analyzing the data that there is still a life signature in the area of the explosion. This is not the first for Faye to sabotage the organization named Bayonder's Academy, but Faye also believed that it wouldn't be their last also. He will make sure to get to the Bayonder's Academy next time and both the mad scientists proceed to leave the area. Currently on the Bayonder's Academy's plane, the president felt embarrassed like her dignity was crushed that she couldn't even speak and kept her head low. Two of her team is worried for her since she looks all dejected, but one of her team understood her situation that the president has spent her life fighting against zombies only to be saved by one in the end. 
The girl approached the president to clear things up about Zombie's identity. Even with all the high-tech equipment they had, they still thought Zombie is a human being. What they thought about Zombie's identity is that he is a masked hero who has become rather famous lately. The team confirmed that Zombies have lived in the city for a while and just like to hide his identity. The president gripped the tablet looking so hard that it cracked feeling dumbfounded like the squad leader before. After the incident there was a fine afternoon and people were terrified at Zombie as he passes by looking like a hobo. Zombie went inside to the payphone to call his friends and Varmint enthusiastically replied that there's no need for Zombie to worry and they all got out safely. Most of them were fine and are looking for a new place to stay. Zombie's relieved and he promised that he'll find them again if they found a new place to settle down. Back in Zombie's home. After a long stressful day, Zombie finally went home to relax for a bit. As he was about to enter his apartment, the Bayonders Academy tracked him down by hacking Zombie's apartment's security footage camera. They saw Zombie who's about to enter his place, but Zombie sensed that he's being watched and stared back at them. The president and her team were startled. Zombie who's minding his own business by working out while playing face-off by Tech 9 and he featuring The Rock to boost himself up. Zombie's friends whom he treats as his family crossed his mind when he saw their picture together. He wonders if his family already settled down and thought of visiting them soon. Zombie was surprised by the president of Beyonder's Academy made an unexpected visit by barging herself to Zombie's place. The president ordered his securities to take everything from the kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, pots, bowls, and ladles in Zombie's place. The security spreads to follow the president's order while Zombie being on the ground disturbed and thinking of calling the police from the unwanted visitors. The president brought out a legal document to introduce her organization called the Bayonders Academy. She informed Zombie that he has been accepted into the academy. Therefore, Zombie is now a member of the Bayonders Academy without his consent while the president acts as if it's so casual to just barge into someone's home. The president then ordered the security to grab Zombie to drag him out of his home. But Zombie resists since he can't recall joining into some organization he has never heard about. Zombie kept on resisting fighting the securities that Zombies can't go to school but the Bayonders Academy still thinks he's a human being. The security guards were all injured for fighting Zombie while carrying him out of his own home. The Bayonders Academy put Zombie inside their vehicle while one of the Bayonders Academy's team. The red-headed girl has doubts with the president's decision that she believes it's a little inappropriate since the academy has strict criteria for recruitment. She asked if it's okay to just enlist Zombie on the president's command. The red-headed girl also mentioned that every dormitory in the academy is specially planned out. If the president really wants to take Zombie back to their place, then Zombie has nowhere to stay. But the president insists that Zombie could stay with her like she desperately wants to recruit Zombie because of his potential that could help the academy. Meanwhile, the securities followed the president's order by taking all Zombie's essentials until they were done unpacking all Zombie's stuff in the president's place. Zombie was still confused by the president's sudden bargaining. The two of them looked at each other like they were waiting to see who'd explain their side first. Zombie who looked intimidated by the president and asked if he'll be staying at her place. The president answered Zombie's question with common sense. The president became scary to assume that Zombie might want to sleep with her. Zombie panicked for a brief moment because of the president's awkward conclusion. But in Zombie's mind, he pictures a situation of a human fornicating with a zombie. But he thought it would be impossible. The president informed Zombie that he'll be sleeping on her guest room. But Zombie was shy at that moment and attempted to confess that he's not really a human at all. The president doesn't seem interested on listening as she pulls her boots. Zombie was agitated. Until the president revealed that her boots were a robot leg attached to her lower knee. The president revealed that she amputated herself. The president was speechless when she had a flashback. The president's racism against zombies started when a zombie outbreak occurred in her village when she was a kid. The president's parents became zombies and bit her legs. In order for the president to survive, she had to cut her own legs. She also had no choice but to kill her parents who turned into a zombie. Ever since then, the president has a bloodthirsty hatred against zombies that she vowed to kill every zombie she'll meet. After Zombie heard the president's backstory, he chose to shut his mouth. But good thing for Zombie, the president didn't hear his confession about his identity. Zombie didn't bother to tell the president the truth while acting awkwardly. Zombie changed the topic by asking the president about the Bayonders Academy. The president answered the question that the Bayonders Academy is an organization that specializes in coming up with ways to fight zombies. The president gave a background history that it all started 1000 years ago when the zombie outbreak occurred. And in order for the society to survive, the humanity's ancestors established the academy two centuries after the first outbreak. And that the academy's only purpose was to fight against zombies. 
Through the years, the Bayonders Academy had nurtured countless talents to help fight against zombie outbreaks. Zombie tried to remember the first time he became a zombie. But all he remembered was the start of the first outbreak which he became a zombie instantly. Zombie acts like he's not aware of the history. But the president was too busy to chat with Zombie. Instead, she reminded Zombie to report to the academy on the next day since she already enlisted him through a back channel. But Zombie doesn't want to go since he was just dragged in the academy against his will. The president threatens Zombie to not run away or else the academy's high-level expertise will investigate Zombie's motives. The president finally introduced herself. Her name was Violet. Violet Akka the president informed Zombie that one of her team named Dawn will bring him to the academy. Violet was positive that Zombie already met Dawn, but Zombie doesn't have any clue who Dawn was. The next day, a red-headed girl appeared. The next day at the Bayonders Academy, Zombie arrived in front of the academy with Dawn who seemed to be delighted, but Zombie still couldn't remember Dawn. Dawn was dismayed since her and Zombie were together for a brief time back in the armored personnel carrier. Zombie finally remembered her Dawn and teases her that she was just small when they met. Dawn was offended when Zombie made a comment about her tiny height, but she chose to ignore since Zombie will be her future schoolmate. Dawn moved along and told Zombie to come with her for their entrance exam. After a while, Zombie wondered if he needed to take an entrance exam, but for Dawn, it's mandatory to take an entrance exam especially in the academy to test the applicant's both physical abilities as well as the skills of killing Zombie. Dawn gave an example on how to pass the entrance exam like when the world record for the 100 meters sprint was 9.58 seconds. Then a Bayonders Academy applicant must surpass even if it's just a second ahead. Zombie felt a little pressured by the standard of the academy, and he finally understood why it was named the Bayonders Academy. Dawn wondered what could Zombie be thinking. In Zombie's mind, he actually thought that the Bayonders Academy is an insane asylum with a bunch of lunatics. Few minutes have passed. People have gathered for their entrance exam. Everyone was fierce and ready. The crowd was full waiting for their guidance for the exam. In the crowd, Zombie carried Dawn by his shoulders since Dawn was so small, she couldn't see anything from all the way back. But the bald man was so annoyed and cursed at Dawn for being too annoying. But Dawn tries to yell back. And for Zombie, he asked a theoretical question even though he meant himself. That maybe a person who lifted an entire in a human city doesn't need to take an entrance exam. Dawn explained that the academy has no favoritism since she's aware that the academy has plenty of people who can lift planes and that the academy was regulated by the old government, and every student has some sort of secrets. And for obvious reasons, no one actually watches a news in the Bayonders Academy. Until a man with a peg leg arrived. He seemed to be a middle-aged man who'll be in charge of the entrance exam. The examiner that day was the sports department's president named Chen. Before the entrance exam starts, Chen gave a brief background of the prestigious academy about how the academy was established by their ancestors. Chen tries to be an inspiring teacher, but in the middle of his speech he was cut off. When someone called out Chen's name in the crowd, it was Zombie who called out Chen. Zombie was a little shy to be the center of attention as he asked Chen about what will happen to the zombies if they were found in the academy. Chen answered the question so casual that they will tear a zombie limb from limb and hang its corpse by the academy's gate for everyone to see. He also confirmed that they'll neuter the zombie if ever they detected one in the school. Zombie gave an expressionless face after hearing all the horrifying procedures. Chen looked directly at Zombie while he was smirking. The neuter he was trying to say was a procedure on beheading the zombie's penis. Zombie only heard all the worst possibilities yet he already felt the pain from his private part. After Chen's introduction, the entrance exam finally began. All applicants were on their mark being totally focused, until the referee gave the cue for the applicants to start sprinting. Since most of the applicants has a powerful ability, the referee felt a strong wind as they sprint. Zombie was startled by the orange-headed guy. They all dashed so fast that their movements weren't seen by the naked eye. And the first one to reach the finish line was the orange-headed guy named Wu Chengsu who finished the race within three seconds. Zombie was speechless to see himself still running to the goal. The next test was shooting. The applicants tried their best to focus on their aim while Chen on the background educates them that shooting is the most basic skill to fight against Zombie. In Zombie's mind, he felt forced by being dragged to a so-called asylum and was taught how to fight zombies instead of learning a theoretical knowledge about his kind. While Zombie was trying to focus, he looked on his side to see another strong applicant. It was Dawn who just fired her gun so basic. Dawn draws four bullets, and by just one trigger, Dawn beheaded all the targets. Dawn passed the shooting test while she looked so proud of her ability. Zombie felt like he was being humiliated by the strong applicants. Some applicants failed the test and starts to vent their rage on the straw figure. 
Zombie felt nervous throughout his experience. They all moved along with their next test called the shot put. The shot put was explained by Chen that they will need to hit 80 meters to pass and 100 meters to be qualified. They start throwing the heavy ball while Chen observes them. And one by one, Chen called out those who were qualified and failed. Chen called the next group to do the test. And after a while, it turns out that Zombie was just trying to control his strength to avoid suspicion and believe that he's trapped with lunatics. Chen took a peek on his data. He analyzes Zombie's portfolio that Zombie has a height of 182 centimeters and a weight of 72 kilograms that Violet sent. Violet recommended Zombie because of his unbelievable strength. But Chen couldn't believe it since Zombie only got a passing score through put the test. Chen had his suspicion that Zombie might be acting weak. Later that day, they were still not done with their entrance exam and proceeds with another throwing range test. Cheng Su threw the spear with his might. The spear was stable as it was charged in the air. And Cheng Su's target was the mannequin's private part. Zombie squints like he was in the mannequin's position. But with Cheng Su's strength, not only one but three mannequins were pierced by the spear and went flying outside the stadium until it hits a sign on the street. Cheng Su got the citizen's attention with his monstrous throw. In Chen's stopwatch, Cheng Su got 32 kilometers and the targets were hit. Cheng Su was automatically qualified and the next one to throw was Zombie. While Cheng Su walked past to Zombie, he gave Zombie an intimidating impression. Zombie finally grabbed his spear. Zombie was about to throw the spear, but he was stopped by Chen. Everyone was curious about the sudden called out. Chen asked if Zombie was really recommended by Violet. Chen received Violet's report that Zombie was really strong but based on his observation, Zombie only got an average result throughout. He suspected that Zombie might be holding back his strength. Zombie became the center of attention because of Chen's suspicion. Chen also remembered that Zombie was the one who asked him a question before the entrance exam started. Chen dared Zombie to not hold back since it's a bit insulting for those who tries their best to be accepted in the academy. Chen was sharp and thought that maybe Zombie isn't really a human. Zombie denied the allegations while he panicked and trying to convince Chen that he's really a human. Chen believed Zombie and hoped that he could show everyone his true powers. But Chen made a condition that Zombie must surpass Cheng Su in order to pass the test. Chen threatened Zombie thinking that if Zombie couldn't prove that he's strong then he might have pulled a scam in Violet. And in return, Chen will punish Zombie. Zombie was frightened by Chen's scary impression. Zombie starts to think of his own actions. But even though he couldn't remember his past he knew that the people who was chasing him around to be used as an endless power generator came from the academy. Zombie doesn't want to be someone's fuel. Zombie decided to not hold back because in that moment, his life was on the line. Shang Su and Don was looking forward to see Zombie's real strength. Zombie's in his position, leaning backwards to throw perfectly. He concentrates and, in his mind, he remembered all the trainings he did. Until his left eye turned red as a symbol that he's going to use his full potential. He knew that he was not training and working out for nothing. He was so serious that his face turned into someone who shouldn't be messed with. Zombie finally threw the spear and made Cheng Su's face flaps. Zombie's aim was so strong that he demolished the ground. The spear went to the outer space and bounced around the space shuttles until the spear went to the moon. Because of Zombie's unbelievable strength, everyone went flying. While Zombie was on his feet being unbothered, Chen was left aghast who seemed like he didn't expect Zombie to be so monstrous. Meanwhile on the outer space, where the spear hits the moon, Zombie actually managed to pierce the moon. At that moment, Zombie went beast mode using his real strength. After Zombie's throwing range test, everyone was still in the air. Zombie looked up, like he was trying to find where he aimed at. He was standing still like nothing happened, and even made the ground demolished. Because of Zombie's performance, everyone was left speechless. Dawn quickly approaches Zombie expressing her astonishment towards Zombie. Dawn was curious where did Zombie threw his spear, but Zombie doesn't have any idea and just did his best to show his real strength. The missing piece of the moon became an asteroid, wandering around in outer space, when Zombie pierced the moon. And just like that, Zombie automatically became qualified. After Zombie received his certificate, he just wanted to go home. But in Dawn's perspective, Zombie is someone who's qualified to be one of the presidents in their academy. Dawn tried to convince Zombie that he could have the authority if ever he became the president. But Zombie doesn't care. Dawn was persistent and even made Violet as her example. And since Violet is a president not only she command an army of troops, tanks, aircraft, and long-range cannons, Violet also has the access to nuclear weapons. Dawn also mentioned that Violet has the highest authority over a city of 30 million people, and their mayor is just someone who helped Violet manage the city but she still has the final say. Zombie still wasn't interested despite all the privilege Dawn just mentioned. 
Later then, inside the academy, Don gave Zombie a tour around their campus. Don showed the biotech department where all of the weapons are made and it could also be called the logistics department. While looking around, Zombie has noticed a picture. A picture of a happy family and a guy who looked like the mad scientist from before. Don introduces the man in the picture named Jamie. Jamie was the former biotech department president. But Jamie's backstory before he became an ant scientist was that he became obsessed with crazy experiments after his wife died. In his experiment he involved both humans and zombies. Don heard a rumor that Jamie's goal was to fulfill his late wife's dream. After Jamie went crazy, the academy dismissed him and even ordered everyone to kill Jamie on sight. While Don and Zombie were talking, a scientist appeared asking if they're finished with the exam. Don gave a confirmation response while Zombie was familiarized with the woman. Zombie asked Don about the scientist's identity and Don revealed that the scientist was the adopted daughter of Jamie and the current biotech department president. The scientist made Don and Zombie to approach her if they need an equipment. Don looked so excited to make a request to the scientist about her desire to have something that could easily carry weapons. Don wanted a pair of trousers that could hide her gatling gun that looks like bigger than her size. The scientist already guessed that Don might be joining the gunner department. Don actually wanted to join the academy to fulfill her desire to shoot things. The scientist was busy with her work. Until she saw what zombie looks like when she was called. She yelled out of being terrified of zombie's appearance. But Don defended zombie to the scientist named Kin that he's just wearing a zombie mask. But Kin isn't dumb enough to misunderstood. She knew that zombie is in fact a zombie. But Don made her defense that zombie is really just a human since she witnessed how powerful zombie was. But Kin went along with Don and thought that zombie would have attacked her instantly if he really was a zombie. Kin continued with her job and asked zombie about his needs. But Zombie doesn't have anything in his mind but he remembered that every time he goes home, he always ends up being naked. He then requests Kin to make him clothes that's impossible to be ripped. Kin was weirded out to hear Zombie's reason. Kin accepted their request that seemed impossible to make. Meanwhile at the swordsmanship department, Marshall appeared looking like he was ashamed. And in front of Marshall is a woman who seemed to be just chilling. Marshall's presence in the swordsmanship department was to make a report regarding his loss in the battle. On Marshall's point of view, he remembered that as soon as he charged over, his entire vision turned dark. And the very next second, Marshall became naked hanging on top of a lamp post. The woman replied like she was certain that zombies no match to her. But Marshall's positive that zombies freakishly stronger than her. The president stood up and approaches Marshall and asked him so intimidatingly about zombie's name. The president kept glaring at Marshall and she decided to let Marshall go. The sword department president's name was Zhang Lanky. Lanky's just like Violet but Violet was in a blade department. In the academy, there always had been a competition between the sword and the blade department that has been passed down for generations. Both sides would use unscrupulous means to poach people from the other. The competition has gotten so fierce that if the other side has even one or more member than their own, they would rather give birth to the extra member themselves than be weaker than their opponent. Back to present, Marshall wishes his best for Mr. Zombie knowing that Lanky's also strong like Violet. Later that day, a teacher starts his lesson about the habits of a zombie. He lectures his class that other than zombies eating human flesh, they had researched that zombies love eating eggs. The teacher told the class to learn to use the zombies likes to their advantage and their weakness which was their heads when setting a trap. Zombie was a good student in class taking notes to every word the teacher said. Don noticed how serious zombie was. Zombie's reason was that he's willing to share his knowledge to his family act. Of the zombie citizens. Don thinks Zombie was weird for wanting to share his knowledge to his family. Until an announcement occurred in the middle of their lecture, telling everyone to gather at the gymnasium immediately. Don was curious since they just had an assembly earlier. After the announcement, at the gymnasium, students have gathered around. Zombie was busy eating a popsicle while Don's curious about the sudden announcement. Violet arrived at the gymnasium telling Zombie and Don to be quiet and avoid causing trouble since the two of them was recommended by Violet. Don asked a random question if Zombie could eat under his mask. Zombie awkwardly explained himself until Lanky arrived at the gymnasium. A boy next to Kin pointed at Zombie informing her that Zombie's their target, but they seemed to underestimate him since Zombie looked slow-witted. The boy suggested to test Zombie and Lanky allowed him to see Zombie's capabilities. Moments later, another person arrived, a man with robot assistance on his sides. A man with a big scar on his face arrived at the assembly. Everyone bowed their heads because he seemed to be one of the most important men in the academy. The man was the chief. Don pulled down Zombie's head since Zombie couldn't read the room that the chief is the mechanical life form department's president. 
The students showed respect to the chief while Zombie looked empty-headed. But out of all the people who respects the chief, Lanky's the only one who's not intimidated. The chief warned her to not cause trouble. Lanky didn't care and decided to take her leave. The boy was curious about Lanky leaving all of a sudden when their target was literally in front of them. But in Lanky's case, the chief was more important than Zombie since the only people she could respect was the strong one. But unlike Violet, the chief praised Violet for her hard works. Violet humbly accepted the praise and told the chief that she's just doing her work. Zombie noticed how weird was the atmosphere between the department presidents while Don was acting like a kid asking Zombie on what flavor of popsicle he has. And without hesitation, Zombie told Don that he like eggs. Zombie asked Don about how powerful the chief was. Don told Zombie that the chief was connected to Jamie. Don revealed that chief is Jamie's masterpiece that was made by an evolved version of humans. And chief was the only one who survived among the thousands of Jamie's test experiments. And after Jamie was expelled in the academy, Chief formed the Mechanical Life Form Department and the city his department controls have over 50 million people. And during 10 years of Chief's presidency, not a single zombie appeared in the city he controls. The reason why the chief city is a safe place was because even if a single hair was detected he will immediately exterminate the entire R until it's sanitized. Zombie seemed to be intimidated by Chief while Dawn on the side was mesmerized. Chief went on stage to tell the students despite they're just freshmen, the academy needed them. The students wondered how could they help. Chief ordered one of his robot assistants to play a projection to make it more concise for the students. The robot assistant played a project through its eyes and showed an image of a guy sitting. Chief revealed that the guy showed in the projection was the spy that was caught months ago that made the nuclear warhead almost drop to kill some students from the Bayonders Academy. Zombie was mad to realize that he just saw the image of a guy who dropped a bomb on him. Chief followed up his report that the spy deserves to be killed immediately but the Academy realized the spy might have information about Jamie. While Zombie in his mind felt like Jamie was such an important mission than targeting a zombie, Zombie realized that since the threat of the zombies has long since passed, most of the main conflicts are because of infighting. Dawn agreed with Zombie's conclusion. She frowns a bit as she tells the truth of some people just wanted to watch the world burn. Back to Chief, he informed the students that he and the rest tried countless of methods to get the spy to talk, but nothing worked. Even the senior students attempted to make the spy talk, yet they also failed. Chief disturbingly told everyone the methods they used such as tiger bench, needles, castration, and trying to make him drown. All of the torture methods didn't work on the spy and it left the chief no choice but to rely on the freshman. The freshman's mission was a bit difficult, and that's when chief made a deal that whoever made the spy talk could be the vice president. And all of a sudden, everyone was pumped up to hear an offer once in a lifetime. Everyone raises their hand and was willing to volunteer for the mission. First guy was picked and Chief wishes him the best luck. The guy was excited that he starts running to the spy's whereabouts. Two hours later, the guy failed to break the spy to talk. And for after two hours of fruitless efforts, the freshman began to turn desperate. At first, the methods were normal, but slowly turned much more unorthodox. Like one guy starts praying, the next guy annoyed the spy childishly and the next one tried to pull his Buddha skills. At that moment, Violet felt embarrassed for them. Meanwhile, Zombie and Dawn were chilling at the moment while eating their popsicles. Dawn asked Zombie if he could manage to make the spy talk. But Zombie was so confident and even bragged to Dawn that he could even make the spy sing. Dawn was so excited to see Zombie attempt to break the spy. She was so supportive that she called Chief's attention to choose Zombie to be next online. Chief allowed them to do so and showed the path to the spy. In Dawn's mind, she wondered why Zombie suddenly wants to step out when she thought Zombie's someone who likes to keep a low profile. While Zombie was walking forward, Lanky was glaring at him. In Zombie's mind, he thought of his subordinates as someone obedient but for some reason, he noticed for the past few weeks that his subordinates were randomly losing control. He took advantage of the chance that maybe the spy could explain something. Zombie went in to face the spy, but the spy thought that no one will ever break him. The two of them faced each other. Zombie glares at the spy to analyze him. The spy spoke to insult the academy for running out of people and decided to send a zombie-looking person. The spy seemed to be a die-hard loyal underling of Jamie. Zombie slashed the spy and gave him a tiny scar. The spy was confused. The spy laughed hysterically thinking that scathing him was the only thing Zombie could do. Zombie was dead serious and commanded him to stand up. And just like that, the spy immediately did what Zombie told him so. Violet, Dawn, and Chief was shocked to see Zombie just easily commanded the unbreakable spy. It turns out, the scar that Zombie gave the spy was some sort of virus flowing around the spy's veins until it reached his brains. With that virus, Zombie could control the spy's mind. 
Zombie asked the spy's name. The spy responded in an instant that his name was Zio Kai. The people outside were speechless to see Zombie's new ability of controlling people's mind. Zombie tried to ask a personal question about Kai being connected to Jamie. Kai didn't hesitate to answer the question and told Zombie that he knew lots of things. Zombie asked why was the zombies being randomly going berserk. Kai answered the question that they dropped a medicine created by Jamie onto the city that causes the zombies to go crazy. And because of the medicine, Jamie controls the zombies by certain extent. Jamie's team used to order the berserk zombies to attack the humans and through their battles, Jamie's team collected data on the Beyonders Academy. Zombie asked another question about their reason on being a rebellion. But Kai doesn't know Jamie's reasons and all he knows was that Jamie's going to do something great. Kai's only mission was to gather the data of the members of the Beyonders Academy by controlling the zombies to attack the students. Zombie asked Jamie's whereabouts. Kai answered that question without hesitation that Jamie's in a secret base about 500 meters below the city. At that moment Lanky was amazed and speechless to witness that Zombie's not a weakling. Zombie commands Kai to turn around. Before Zombie walks away, he became scary while leaving a message to Kai how hateful the humans were. He also told Kai that he placed a virus inside his brain and he could trigger it to commit suicide. He then told Kai to take care. Kai was still being controlled staring at a blank space and told Zombie that he understood. Meanwhile at Jamie's side, on 500 meters beneath the city, they were already alerted that Kai has snitched on them and now that the Beyonders Academy knew their hideout. Jamie thinks of his next move, but it was a good thing for Jamie that the Academy's about to come to him. But Jamie's assistant was worried since he's aware of the Academy's capabilities. But Jamie's just chilling because in his defense, his experiment's almost over. For him, it was a great timing for the Academy to barge in. For them to witness a historical moment of his invention of the birth of a complete life form. Back to the Academy, Zombie just left the room. People were all intimidated by him, but they were also terrified of Zombie. Students started to gossip around to see Zombie with his mind control ability. Violet was also intimidated. And for Lanky, she realized how strong Zombie could be. Students began to realize that Zombie shouldn't be messed with. But one person applauded Zombie. It was the chief. He was proud to see that someone in the freshman has an amazing hidden talent. And after witnessing Zombie's hidden ability, Chief fulfilled his promise to make Zombie the next vice president. But for Zombie, he's more focused on Jamie but Chief knew that Jamie won't run away. Lanky was a bit bored now. While Chief guides Zombie to the registration process, the boy on Lanky's side found it weird that there was a registration process to become a vice president. Lanky finds the situation a bit fishy and decided to follow Chief and Zombie. At the abandoned industrial area, it seemed like the place was quiet. Zombie felt off. Zombie was curious if the abandoned place will be under him. He remembered that he should be getting registered and go after Jamie. But Chief was really sharp and asked Zombie when did he learn to speak human language like he instantly detected Zombie's true nature. Zombie acts dumb when Chief asked him a question. Chief instantly pulled his guns and fires at Zombie. But behind Zombie was Lanky and her assistant. The assistant was worried of Lanky but Lanky immediately recognized that it was the Chief's weapon that has the ability to disintegrate all matter. Chief was someone who couldn't be fooled when he recognized Zombie's true nature. He called out the Academy for being idiots to just let Zombie slip inside the Academy. Zombie looked like he was beheaded and made the Chief thought he took care of everything since the Zombie's weakness was their head. Chief apologized to kill off Zombie, but he has no choice since Zombie just entered a restricted Academy. But the Chief noticed that Zombie wasn't stumbled, and he was attacked with no trace of Zombie seen on his naked eye. He was smashed on the building and made him scathed. All of a sudden, Chief's robot assistants arrived at the scene and fired their lasers at Zombie. That causes explosion at the abandoned place. But Zombie grabbed the robots and was thrown away. The high intelligent robots were destroyed. Chief felt unsettled to see Zombie fighting back. Chief wondered how Zombie could still move despite being headless. Zombie was headless while holding one of the robot assistants. Lanky and her subordinate was amazed by Zombie fighting back. Zombie charged his attack against Chief, but Chief managed to dodge the attack. Zombie continuously smacks the chief while Chief kept dodging, until the chief pulled his weapon. But Zombie managed to dodge it. Chief began to be irritated at Zombie being fast despite with no head. Zombie kept trying to punch the chief, but the chief jumped backwards so he could make his next move. Lanky's subordinate thought the chief was in trouble but Lanky doesn't want to bother knowing that chief began to get serious. Lanky knew chief well that men like him likes to show off with big and flashy moves. Lanky advises her subordinate to move a bit further so they won't get caught up in the area of effect. Meanwhile, Zombie's head goes spiral, until his head was formed to its original. 
Lanky and her subordinate was aghast to witness Zombie's head grew back. Zombie just wanted to talk because he never intended to hurt Chief. But Chief doesn't underestimate Zombie. He thought that Zombie might control his mind. Chief still wanted the fight to continue and made one of his robot suits named Model 1 to be summoned. All the fragments went to the area and was instantly attached to Chief's body. Zombie was confused, while Lanky and her subordinate was amazed. Chief was wearing all the fragments and made him look like a robot. The Chief called himself the mechanical life form. He acts and talks like a robot as he charged his attack. Chief successfully hits Zombie with its kneecap. Zombie went flying while Chief was ready to make his next move. Zombie was about to fall on the ground. Chief gave Zombie a big punch in the gut and made Zombie fly off the ground. Lanky and her subordinate was amazed as they watched the battle. Chief doesn't want to stop and kept charging his attack and went after Zombie. He consistently fights Zombie. While Zombie was hit mutinously, he couldn't fight back. The Chief made his final blow and smacked Zombie to the ground. Zombie's body hits the ground. The Chief landed on his feet while reciting that all zombies must be killed and must die. He uses his one final attack, using a laser coming out of his chest. Lanky was terrified, while Chief was using his big disintegrator laser against Zombie, and the dark alley went bright. Chief huffs and catches a breath. He assumed that Zombie should be annihilated at that moment, until Zombie walked in, and Chief was felt dumb to see Zombie walking. Zombie stands perfectly still and screamed on top of his lungs. The scream was so loud that made Lanky and her subordinate to flinch. Even Chief was affected by Zombie's scream despite wearing a highly developed suit. Zombie was dead serious at that moment, and even grew a hair. Lanky and her subordinate was horrified of Zombie. Zombie walks forward to Chief, while Chief began to be a little scared. But Zombie seemed like he doesn't want to play anymore. The sky starts to go spiral, while Zombie was standing still on the ground. The spiral went bigger that became the size of the city. The sky got Dawn's attention, and even Lanky who was just chill a while ago began to panic. And for the citizens, they fell off to see the big spiral in the sky. Chief was speechless and intimidated, but Zombie meant what he said and even gave Chief a chance to settle the situation peacefully. But the Chief doesn't want to hear him out. Chief was confused. Zombie scarily asked Chief if what ways does he want to die. Lanky and her subordinate noticed that Zombie's personality took a 180 degree change and gave Lanky an ominous feeling. Lanky and her subordinate left the place immediately, or else they'll get caught. Chief had never felt threatened by another being since he was born. He acts tough like he wasn't scared of Zombie. Chief didn't stop to provoke Zombie and even dared him to come at him, while Lanky and her subordinate was running away. Lanky's subordinate informed her that he had gone through Zombie's database, but he had never seen a creature like Zombie to be so strong. The two of them hoped to be safe from Zombie and Chief's duel, until the two of them was caught up. The two of them was alerted by the danger that the battle might get into the new city. Chief's limbs were missing while being smashed on the ground. Zombie approaches him, but the Chief summoned his robot assistants the Model 2, 3, and 4, and it created a huge explosion. Lanky was caught up beside Chief. At that moment, Chief asked Lanky to help him knowing that Zombie's dangerous. But Lanky was deeply scared and called Chief insane for provoking Zombie in the first place. Lanky advises her subordinate and Chief to split up and escape, while Zombie on the ground was about to charge his next attack. But Lanky noticed that Zombie won't just let them get away. Zombie smacked the ground. That causes an earthquake. Lanky loses her balance and made her fall. Lanky was deeply horrified and confused, but Zombie was holding the ground and lifts it up. That made the half of the city to float. The citizens began to panic. They're all terrified of the situation. Even Dawn was mesmerized with what she saw, that the new city was floating. Meanwhile on Zombie's side, Chief fell from the ground and bumped his head so hard. Zombie immediately went after Chief. He smirked while holding the Chief on his head with missing limbs and asked if Chief felt more threatened at that moment. Zombie held Chief's limbless body. With a villainous look on his face, Zombie was positive that he couldn't control a robot's mind. But Chief wasn't a pure robot. Even though his limbs were all mechanics, Churf still has human brain. Zombie griped Chief's head tighter. He did the same technique to Chief like he did to the spy earlier, until the virus finally reached Chief's brain. Zombie saw Chief's memory starting with two adults in a silhouette figure. He then saw Chief in his childhood days being an orphan with two deceased parents in front of him. The memory shifts to a doctor performing an underwent body modification surgery. In Chief's memory, there was a part when his human parts were all removed and was replaced by irons. After Zombie took a glimpse of Chief's memory, he insulted Chief for being miserable and for being more undead than a zombie. 
Zombie decided to spare Chief since he believed that Chief will suffer more if he's alive than being dead. Zombie got bored and tossed Chief on top of the cliff. But luckily, Lanky was able to catch Chief. With horrified looks, Lanky was aghast to see one of the abilities Zombie has was reading memory. All of a sudden, Zombie disappeared. Later that night, Zombie was back to his normal self. He packed all his stuff to run away for feeling ashamed of losing control over his emotions. Even Zombie was scared of himself. He kept convincing himself that he's a friendly and nice zombie. But he was really ashamed to face humanity as he walked out the door. But Violet caught him sneaking out. But he had no choice but to make his witness go silent. Zombie apologized for the thing he's about to do. But he was cut off when Violet showed him a document. Violet showed the paper documents for Zombie that states that he is an official vice president of the Beyonders Academy from then on. Zombie was confused that no one reacted violently from his berserk earlier. He was even more confused when he saw that Chief consented him to be the vice president. Zombie asked Violet if ever Chief mentioned anything about him. Violet answered the question when she heard that Chief thought of Zombie as a good human. Violet didn't react violently. She even congratulated Zombie for his recent accomplishments. Meanwhile, Chief was bedridden with Lanky on his side. Lanky thought it was a terrible mistake when Chief made Zombie to stay despite him knowing the truth of Zombie's real nature. But Chief looked on the other side. It didn't matter whether Zombie was a human or not. Chief looked more on the opportunity and advantages if Zombie was on their side. But Lanky was more concerned if Zombie goes berserk again. But Chief was still willing to take the risk. He changed the topic when he asked Lanky about the arrangements. Even though Chief was absolutely defeated, he still thought of Professor Jamie. He promised himself that he will erase all traces of Professor Jamie for good. Somewhere in the sea, the zombie society was all alerted by a news that Zombie was being held hostage inside a human city. Varmint who's a loyal family, asked the rest of his companions on what could he do to save their boss. The zombie society were all protesting to kill all the humans in order to save their king zombie. Blackie thought it was stupid for Varmint to protest, and be worried since Blackie and Agu was totally aware of Zombie's unbelievable and monstrous power. Back to the Bayonders Academy. Chief was now perfectly fine with limbs. He then made an announcement for everyone to get ready since it's finally their chance to catch Professor Jamie. Meanwhile, somewhere in the land city, Zombie and Don were strolling around while Don was fascinated with how people have maintained the abandoned place for so long, until a soldier stopped and a group of military blocked Zombie and Don's way. Zombie was deeply confused, but the soldiers were actually formally greeting Zombie to welcome him to his new city that's going to be under his rules. And the soldier informed Zombie that they will be following Zombie's orders from then on. Zombie was still in shock that things went so fast, he didn't even ask for his achievements in the first place. All of the soldiers formally stood on the city to greet their newest vice president Zombie. The zombie asked the soldier if he really listened to anything he said, and what if he told her to kill himself. The soldier pulled out a bomb from his pocket. The zombie was trying to stop him because he was kidding, but the soldier didn't stop. He continued to throw the bomb. They looked at each other. So, it turns out it's just a significant side character, and here he thought they would send someone strong. They saw the man sitting at the top, and they were wondering about that. He didn't understand why they would send a weakling like him to guard such an important location. The two men were standing they were from the Stainless Steel Academy and next to the Bayonders Academy. They were sent to help her catch the target. The red hair shocked the two men, the heads of the Steel Blade Department at the Stainless Steel Academy. They are President Bang and Vice President Chewie. The original was an internal affair of the Academy, so he wonders why the higher-ups made him come help him, but so be it. Helping others is normal. He doesn't understand why he would suddenly promote a newbie to Vice President and even have him guard such an important strategic location. She ordered her to come here to help us and not to pry into affairs, but Chief Gang said that as outsiders, they have no authority to question the decisions of her chief. The novice is blocking the exits while he tells them the important part of their mission, which is to attack. He asked him to explain to her why he assigned just a newbie vice president to monitor such a crucial spot given the extensive roadways and several exits in the north of the city, because he is capable of beating him until he pees out of his pants. The man said that he was stronger than him, and it's fine either way. He recruited two members from his academy to help him secure the exits, so there's nothing for him to do anyway. The scientist said to Brother Fay that they have the entire city surrounded. He replied to him, release the zombies. He clicked the red bottom, and he said that he was something weird that got mixed in with them. The two chiefs shot the zombies. When they started firing on the zombie, they faced no challenges. He held the zombies, and they weren't from his tribe. She signs, and she doesn't hear anything at all. He says that he needed to leave that place because they could do that. 
He called him a weakling, and he said that he should go back and play with children's toys. She was annoyed at the chief. They are catching their attention. The little varmint is there, and Zombie asked him what he was doing to that place. The scientist was laughing, and he declared to him, give him a good show. Two hours ago, a little varmint faced the zombie, and he challenged it. He took out the gallon of gasoline, and he was wondering about that. The zombie had run away, and he declared that he didn't dare go against the king's orders, so he would be returning first, and he wished him luck. A little varmint was crazy. He asked if they needed him and if he could kill the human by himself. He was wondering about what he smelled. The scientist was watching and had a new subject recorded. They are watching what the little varmints do. The zombie asked if he was a little varmint, and the red-haired was weird at what he was doing. The little varmint opened the gallon, and he drank the gasoline. She was wondering because he drank the gasoline. After he drank it, his body grew stronger. He screamed it, causing the ear to become irritated, and the window broke. Zombie was standing while the red hair was flying, and the chief behind him was irritated by those sounds. After that she asked, what is that? The little varmint challenged the chief to come play with him. The chief was crazy because he thought the battle was interesting to him, and he declared to him that his ears almost popped from that roar. He pulled her hand, and he ordered him to run. While they were running, she asked why they needed to run, and they still had those two department heads. He replied that they couldn't kill him. She said it again, and he said that he was not a joke. The little varmint was crazy while he was holding his armor. President Bang called them trash because they were running at the first sight of a stronger enemy. His comrade said that he would take care of it. He agreed to it. Something happened behind him, and he immediately turned his back. His comrade died, and he was shocked about that. The little varmint asked him how he wanted to die. Zombie, Red Hair and Soldier continued to run, and they went up to the top of the building. President Bang and Little Varmint was attacking each other. The scientist was crazy while watching them. He bullied President Bang and punched him. President Bang declared that he was not a weakling. He turned it round and round, and he threw it. The Little Varmint didn't stop bullying the president. He kicked it, and his comrades sympathized with it. He put his foot on the chest of the president. The president is trying to stop him. Zombie and Red Hair were using the telescope to watch them and she saw that he was looking bad because he doesn't think that President Bang can hold on much longer. The little varmint was laughing because the president said that he wouldn't lose his president. The president was trying not to cry, but he couldn't stop his tears, and he was already leaking them, and he was shouting mommy. He didn't want to die and save him. While the two were watching them, the scientist called the president stupid human academy, and he was laughing. On top of the building, they are talking and the soldier asks what they do. The red hairs said that they couldn't send the ordinary soldier, and they would all die. Zombie was wondering because he didn't recognize him. He looked at the red hair and he had planned to use her to recognize him. The red hair was annoyed, and she asked if he wanted her to become his food. He took her hand, and he bit him. The red hair was hurting. She was looking at his arm, which had a trace of teeth. She asked if he was taking advantage of the situation to control her mind. He replied that he was not like that. The president was scared of the varmint. He called his mom and said that he was wrong and shouldn't have made fun of her. He was pleased not to kill him. Variant just laughs. Someone was shouting, and he called him. Variant was wondering about that. She walked with his gun, and she challenged the Variant to play with her. The zombie bit the red hair, and his cells spewing out genetic nucleotides and supplanting them were spread to his blood. The red hair was a zombie holding the gun. They are wondering about that girl. Varmint asked if he wanted to play with him. She replied that he was a bragger, and she asked what makes him think he is special. She pointed the gun at the varmint and rained bullets on it. She was laughing while the gun was firing. The president was startled, which caused him to start crying. The little varmint moved quickly to avoid being shot at. He approached the president and told him to run fast. The red hair was running fast to the varmint, and she put the bomb in the mouth of the varmint. After she dropped the bomb, she moved fast to run away, and the bomb boomed. Varmint doesn't hurt what she's doing. She rained bullets on it. The soldier asked the vice president of zombies what he had to do. He replied that he just modified Don's genes a little bit, and that's all. The Don should still be able to become more powerful. There is smoke that caused the bomb. The red hair was laughing at him and she liked that feeling. While the two chiefs were hugging each other because they were scared by what happened, Varmint asked her if she really thought that she could defeat him with such puny strength. He used his armor, but the red hair countered his attack. She kicked him, so he splattered on the ground. When he kicked, he was hurt. The chief believed in the red hair. He declared that she was so powerful, and he asked why she had been pretending to be weak before. She said that it's time for Bang Bang. Zombie was shocked by her. He was hurt, and he saw a tank, and he drank it. He challenged the red hair to continue the war. She used the gun to shoot a varmint. Varmint had strength because he drank gasoline. The chief was shocked and scared. 
The varmint was undead and couldn't kill him, and he declared that she was wasting her energy. The varmint was wandering. Red Hair asked what he was saying about the undead, and she declared that she was also one. She let the game continue. The president and vice president asked what kind of lunatics they were. They have run away, and he is pleased to save them. The little varmint was wondering about the two and who the real zombies were. Zombie and the soldier were watching them. He didn't expect Dawn to become so powerful after a genetic mutation, but all her bones are shattered and all her muscles are torn apart. Although he can use genetic recombination, the pain of being dismembered is real. Since he disobeyed his orders and didn't stay at home, he was disciplining the little variant. She faced the little varmint, and she punched his face. She kicked her and hit her with something. The little varmint was hurting. He was prone on the ground. She didn't stop bullying the little varmint. He was pleased to stop hitting him, and he declared that he was surrendering. He will leave, and he will return to his home immediately. Zombie and scientists were watching them. The red hair was stopped from attacking. She didn't know this was the prank of a varmint. Varmint was sneak attacking her, and she could not move. They are shocked by what happened. Zombie asked why she was letting her guard down, and he declared to her that once he relaxed her vigilance, things would revert to their original state. She was hurting, and she replied that she didn't know that. The little varmint declared to her that it turns out she has taken some stimulants, but the effects have worn off. He was taken care of in the next life. He asked what kind of zombie she was while laughing at her. Zombie was disappointed. He then continued laughing. The two chiefs were asking for help. He then shouted, Mommy, and told them that they didn't want to die. The scientist was stopping to laugh when he saw another one had arrived. Zombie was trying to save them. The scientist wasn't worried because his strength is quite formidable and unmatched, and he cheered for his varmint. A little varmint was looking at Zombie. Zombie asked if he remembered him. They are scared, and they are wondering what would have happened to them if he hadn't gone down Zombie. The scientist was worried because the variant was stopping to move. Zombie said to him that he told him to stay at home, and he asked him for an explanation. He remembered when Varmint faced him last time. Last time, he called him weak and feeble. She asked what they were discussing, and he replied that he doesn't know, but it seems he peed his pants. In panic, he peed on it. The scientist asked what he was doing, and he declared to him to attack him. Zombie was standing, and Varmint didn't talk. He flashed to his mind what happened last time. He asked him what he was doing and why he was scared of zombie. The little four eyes didn't know that the varmint was remembering that because he had an undying body. He was ripped into shreds, turned into sashimi, and left to dry on a tree for over a hundred years. He told him that he needed to attack him, but he said that he didn't want to fight him. He told the scientist that if he wanted to attack him, he should fight him by himself. They were shocked by what he said, and they didn't talk. This was the first time such a thing had happened to him. He asked how he got rid of his control. He says that he has given up on that route, and he needed to come down. It was cloudy, and there were several sounds that might have come from the air or a helicopter. He declared that the president was here. President Lanky asked if he was sure if her brother Faye was down there. He said yes, and there are six floors, and the total area is over 11,000 square meters. President Lanky was shocked by the 11,000 square meters, and President Lanky asked how long they would have to search the damn place for. The mass was standing while holding his sword and he declared that the problems could be solved using absolute and insurmountable amounts of strength. President Lanky was trying to stop him from going as planned, but he continued. Blue Hair was shouted because he was reckless. He threw something that caused an explosion. The city had an explosion, and he asked, isn't it faster than taking an elevator? The President Lanky was annoyed with him, and she told him that he wasn't using his brain. She then asked if that was a trap and what they would have done. The man said that in front of absolute power, all schemes are useless. He was leaving, and he was jumping into the helicopter. The soldiers were checking the area. The soldier was ordered to report to Chief Gang that there is no one in Area 1 and to Chief Kin that there is no one in Area 2. The man was annoyed because they escaped, but he replied to him that he sealed all routes in and out of the city, be they land, water, or air not even a mosquito can get past. One sunny day, he asked why they needed to wait while they got to go down and catch the bad guys. She was annoyed because if they worked together, they were not any weaker than them. She tried to stop President Lanky from becoming irritated. She said that they were superiors after all, but she cursed them. At the same time, on top of the building somewhere, the scientists were busy planning, and Brother Faye ordered that plan be executed. The man was standing in front of the notes that were written in Zombie King inside. He was wondering about that. He got the notes. He read the notes, and there was a Zombie King inside. It's extremely dangerous. He was thinking about the last sentence, open it if you're a man. He ordered the soldier to blow it up for him. They are here to catch people. There's no need to take any other risks. He said that they didn't fall for it, but Brother Faye ordered that plan B be executed. 
Brother Fei clicked the red button. The alarm went off, and they ran quickly. This is what we called the trap. He said the laboratory had been opened. Brother Fei was laughing when he declared that it was time to welcome the dawn of a new great species. He ordered the elimination of all human life, including himself. They are watching to see what happens after the explosion. They are shocked, and he asks if it was the zombie king. The baby zombie. He tells his comrade to be careful. It wouldn't have been a problem if it looked ferocious from the start. He thought that it's problematic only when they look weak and harmless, like a child. And he told him, don't underestimate the baby zombie. The baby zombie landed on his head. He shouted that all members must retreat immediately. The soldiers were busy running fast. While the man was attacking the baby zombie, the baby zombie was divided in the middle and they multiplied. They don't know what to do. The baby zombie was standing in the middle of the circle. The scientists said that the zombies were released while they were distracted. The zombie attack started when they attacked the city. It's far away and they can already see the zombies and there are too many of them. The man was scared and had plans to set up a defensive line. But President Lanky said that he didn't need that because her warm-up and expert work should just be left to the professionals. In an exciting scene, he used her sword to attack the zombies. President Lanky moves fast. President Lanky kicked the face of a zombie. The zombies were flying through the air. President Lanky is so strong because she can attack the zombies. The man who is eating pudding believes in President Lanky. President Lanky showed her fast-moving moves. Something dropped, and he was amazed at President Lanky. She said, if they think they can escape by causing chaos, they better think again. The scientist was surprised because she killed all the zombies that he released. He declared that if he still had the zombie with the chainsaw, the zombies spread out on the road. The man was watching while the zombies were panicking. They wear masks to prevent the virus. He was holding a photo of a varmint, and he asked if he knew him, but the zombie got angry, so he denied the paper that he was holding, and the paper was splattered. He was afraid that if they couldn't bring back the varmint in time, the king would punish all of them. He replied, don't panic because they will definitely find him. Back in the zombie's laboratory, the zombie was still standing in the middle of the circle. The two men were walking when they met a zombie and wanted to play with him. He thinks he's taunting him. The two men attacked the baby zombies. The zombies ran away. He yelled for him not to run away from him. Be a man and fight him for real. The zombie was standing in front of him. He removed his pacifier from his mouth. A female zombie came, and they were surprised by it. They don't know what to do. The female zombie was sitting at the table, and she was looking at the two men. The female zombie told them that they should play with her. He said that he would cut her into shreds. He tried to attack the female zombie, but she held the end of the sword. He panicked, so he called his companion and asked for help. But his companion was hurting. The man who was standing and wearing full gear was kicked with the knees of a zombie, so it made a loud sound. They are wondering about those loud sounds. They saw the top of the building explode. With the force of his kick, it splashed into them. He asked if he could help him. Blackie replied to him that he was a zombie. The Stainless Steel Academy chief, she asked what happened down there. He was hurt by hitting the zombie. He asked what he was talking about, and they looked at it. They saw the female zombie sitting in the glass. Meanwhile, on the other side of the city, they cooked chicken wings and ate them together. President Zombie liked eggs, and the red-haired girl had seen barbecued chicken and duck before, but this was the first time that she saw barbecue and egg. He handed Zombie a cup of tea. He tasted the tea, and it was a little dry for him. He was shocked by President Zombie. He declared to go call in an aircraft to deliver the best Xijing tea. President Zombie heard something, and he asked what it was. Back in the female zombie a female zombie was standing on top of the bridge. She thought that female zombies look different from the ones we normally fight and might have a problem. She ordered her to call a truce and they need to work together to fight the female zombie. There have been explosions coming from underground, but the last one sounded a lot closer. President Zombie will look. As soon as the female zombie appeared, Lanky immediately threw something at the female zombie. But the female zombie easily dodges it as she slowly approaches Lanky and Violet. Violet sprint against the female zombie. Even though Violet attacked from the blind spot, the female zombie had advanced fast reflexes. Violet stumbled, while the female zombie makes fun of Violet's slow response. But Violet didn't let herself fall so she instead kicked the female zombie as a defense. The kick was so fast that the female zombie only saw a silhouette. Violet successfully hits the female zombie. Unfortunately, Violet's strength wasn't enough for the female zombie. Violet immediately backs away to think of another defense. Lanky then swooped in to use her weapon against the female zombie. But from every single spot and angle, the female zombie could still dodge all of the attacks. The chief saw the ruckus the female zombie was making from afar. He hoped for Violet and Lanky could stall a bit of time. 
He only needed two minutes. As he prepared for his backup suit, as he summoned the suit, his whole body was covered with steel. The female zombie saw the chief's transformation that she thought it would be more interesting to fight him instead. His transformation was instantly completed. He called his transformation as the Heart of Steel, Mark I. Meanwhile, Violet was infuriated with the way the female zombie was looking down on them. The female zombie stood still in between as Lanky and Violet attempts to counterattack at once. The two of them felt insulted since the female zombie was just chilling. By their surprise, the female zombie suddenly showed her long tongue. Lanky and Violet was left speechless, but the truth was, the female zombie also transformed into a gigantic buffed form. As the female zombie smacked the ground, the force made Lanky and Violet flew away near the female zombie. The female zombie turns into a giant devilish man, but the chief even dared the giant zombie to come at him. Meanwhile, Violet and Lanky felt so weird towards the zombie that Professor Jamie just made. Even Violet was too speechless by the overpowered creature, until the giant zombie and the chief had a face off. The two of them slowly approaches each other. The two of them declared a battle with pride in their soul as an opposite entity. The two of them instantly clenched their fist to give us mighty punch. Despite the size differences the chief doesn't wish to give up. Their fist clashes to each other. That it created a massive explosion which also affected Violet and Lanky. Zombie and Dawn also saw the explosion from their whereabouts. After their counterattack, a silhouette of a man appeared in the thick smoke. After their collision, the chief lost and arm even some part of hit ribs. The giant zombie declared his opponent's defeat. But despite trembling from extreme pain, he still doesn't want to admit his loss. The giant zombie laughed that it seemed like their battle will continue unless one of them sees the doors from hell. Zombie and the rest went where the ruckus was at. But the first thing that zombie noticed as they arrived was a familiar smell. He still couldn't name it as he gazes at the city. Back to the giant zombie. He revealed that he still got more transformation he could show for the chief to give up. The man was in shock. All of a sudden, the giant zombie grew a hair, and his muscles shrinks. On his transformation, he turned into a man in his adolescence with dark stones on his left arm. Even the scientist was concerned that their creation was uncontrollable, but for Professor Jamie, it was perfect. The man was overly confident that he doesn't think it would be necessary to continue the fight. The chief curses at the zombie and still uses his remaining energy to fight. Luckily, Violet and Lanky also gave him a hand to defeat the Zombie King. But terrifyingly, the Zombie King with advanced analysation could see their moves and tactics. And with a one single flick, everyone who's near the Zombie King got swayed by the strong forces of the wind. The three of them was affected especially for the chief who lost a limb. Even the windows from every buildings got shattered by the single flick. Lanky and Violet couldn't stop coughing. The force was too strong that it sent them flying until the two of them landed in front of Zombie and the rest. Zombie immediately picked the injured presidents, while Dawn panicked for their state. And for President Bang and Vice President Chewie, they their chief being defeated. The chief who lies in the demolished ground still got pride and willing to continue the fight. The Zombie King finds it funny that his opponents still got guts to fight against him. As Zombie analyzes the situation, he immediately warned everyone to leave. Even Dawn got scared by Zombie suddenly being too serious. Until the Zombie King pointed at his opponents as he ordered his comrades to attack Zombie and the rest. All of a sudden, multiple of Zombies appeared in the sight. Bang and Chewie starts to panic. While Lanky favored Zombie to declare a retreat or else they'll all be dead. Multiple Zombies dashes to attack the human civilization. While Professor Jamie laughed hysterically to present his creations. Until Zombie got mad and dropped the two presidents. Lanky who witnessed Zombie gone berserk felt like she knew what's gonna happen next. Zombie only uses one word with a high tone for the multiple zombies to scram. The zombies were all confused, yet they all listened to Zombie in a single order. The multiple zombies wait for Zombie to speak up, while the Zombie King was deeply confused on why his subordinates would listen to the enemy's order. The Zombie King couldn't figure out what was happening, but he sure was mad that their plan was interrupted. Zombie calls out for the Zombie King as he approached him by stepping on the multiple zombies to get in his mind that he is the real Zombie King. In the large city, all the zombies served Zombie like a king. They all rushes over to kneel for Zombie to step on. Violet and Rest followed Zombie's instruction to retreat while the Chief of Steel Academy was in shock of Zombie's capability. Zombie then grew a hair that symbolizes that he's going berserk against the so-called Zombie King. Zombie looked down at the zombie while standing on the pile of zombies. The Zombie King was too stunned to speak that Zombie just made all the zombies his slave. The Chief of the Steel Academy was shocked. Especially Dawn, since it was her for time to see Zombie with hair. The Zombie King realized that he just faced his match. 
He even made fun of the Bayonders Academy for letting a literal zombie be their vice president. The two of them had a face-off and declared that whoever won the battle will be entitled as the king of the zombies. The zombie king dares to approach. While zombie was just waiting for the battle to start, the zombie king instantly punches zombie on the cheeks. But for zombie, he felt like he just got his cheeks poked and teased the zombie king for not eating yet. The zombie king was triggered until zombie gave him a punch with strong force that even the pile of zombies flew away. Dawn screamed and still couldn't move after witnessing a shocking revelation. On that moment, the city reigns with zombies. While the zombie king flew away, zombie's punch was too strong that he sent his opponent flying past the city. But not just a single city the zombie king had passed through. Until his body got sent on the sea, the zombie king hits a submarine that caused chaos to the people in the sub. The ship wobbled like there's a tsunami. And for the first time, the zombie king felt a pain. Even Professor Jamie couldn't comprehend how another zombie could match his masterpiece. The two evil scientists couldn't do anything but to watch the intense battle. But the zombie king was like a masochist. He enjoyed the battle despite getting his body thrown away. The two evil scientists began to panic that they couldn't analyze zombie until the zombie king swam under the submarine and carried upon his shoulders. Until Dawn and Violet looked up the sky only to see their submarine flying and about to land on the city. The zombie king smacked the submarine on zombie. He even made a clapback joke that he's already full. The submarine undemolished one-fourth of the city. But Dawn thought it would be best if they all changed their location first. Meanwhile on Agu and Blackie's side, the two of them was wielding the mechanical body parts of Chief. Chief once again lies limbless on the ground but something had caught Blackie's attention. The chief was annoyed and thought of how idiotic Blackie and Agu for cutting the pieces that needed to be wielded and wielded the pieces that needed to be cut. Blackie and Agu stopped their business for a while as soon as they felt the presence of their king. After the zombie king hit Zombie with a submarine, Zombie was able to pierce through it. Zombie aims for the zombie king, and with him was a thick rope he got inside the submarine. Dawn was too intrigued that she forgot their agenda to retreat, while the zombie king enjoys his time with his match. The zombie king dared zombie to fight more. Zombie was delighted as he holds the rope. As zombie threw the rope against the zombie king, it perfectly aimed at his neck. From a tall height distance, zombie pulled the rope. While the chief of Steel Academy wasn't sure if the Bayonders Academy really recruited a zombie or a super entity, zombie sarcastically teased the zombie king for running away. The zombie king couldn't make a comeback since zombie strangling him. As Zombie pulled the Zombie King closer, he instantly kicked him in the face. The kick was too strong that the Zombie King's face turned into a butthole. He then flew away. But he was struggling to defend himself since Zombie tied a thick wire on his neck. The Zombie King tried to pull the thick wire. He desperately wanted to fight back until Zombie cuts the wire and made the Zombie King fall from the sky like a shooting star. As the Zombie King hits the ground, it made the submarine jump due to the strong force. Even Bang and Chewie forgot that they also must retreat, but they were too intrigued. The Zombie King also seemed like he doesn't want to give up as he goes on top of the submarine. Even Zombie was impressed with his opponent's determination. The Zombie King lifts the submarine and threw Zombie away to change their location. Zombie was thrown to the sea, like he was a rock being thrown. But Zombie managed to land gracefully on a ship. The soldiers on the deck noticed Zombie's presence, but he was mistaken as a person. Zombie waits for his opponent's arrival. He even got more serious after he was thrown away. The soldiers realized that the overpowered person who arrived was a zombie. They all panicked and decided to abandon the ship. The zombie king teases zombie that he could also throw things if he has the ability, as if like he was stronger than zombie. Agu carried Chief by holding his head. Chief panicked when he realized that every chaos that happened on that day was Professor Jamie's doing. He warned Blackie and Agu to immediately retreat. But for Blackie, there's they should be afraid of. He dared to make Chief watch the fight. Because Blackie believed that no one are able to defeat their one and only king. Not even a god has the capabilities to defeat Zombie. Back on the ship, Zombie suddenly disappeared. And by the Zombie King's surprise, all of a sudden Zombie appeared on top of him. The Zombie King lets his guard down that he didn't realize Zombie has a speed faster than him. Until he got punched in the face. And again, the Zombie King was sent flying. But this time, he was sent outer space. He couldn't tell where he was. Until he saw the ship being thrown at him. It was like Zombie just proved him that he could also throw things. The Zombie King couldn't fight back nor move, until he was smashed on the moon with a ship on his face, and the audience got their jaws dropped. Zombie was deeply satisfied as he threw the ship at the Zombie King, while the soldier behind him was already terrified of his presence. The ship perfectly pierced on the moon like it was a dart. Meanwhile, Dawn and the rest felt like it would be useless to run away no matter where they'll go. 
But then, the zombie king is alive. And he wasn't done yet. He yelled with all of his might, and threw the ship back on Earth. He dared to continue the battle as he returned on land. Zombie smirked as he looked up the sky. He waited for the zombie king, but he got short-tempered and decided to meet his opponent instead. Zombie jumped to outer space without noticing the innocent soldier with him on a boat. Zombie landed on the ship in outer space. He sprints to attack the zombie king as it declared for another round. But then the ship fired a weapon. The nuclear reactor explodes, while the zombie king ripped every parts of the ship, until the ship fell back on Earth. The ship turned into an asteroid falling in Earth. Everyone panicked since they're aware of the possible disaster. As the ship hits the city, the city looked like a nuclear bomb was being dropped in it. Even the boats and ships flipped over, until it causes a huge explosion. Dawn and the rest immediately hide behind a rock, until the sky became clear. Zombie landed on Earth gracefully, and same goes for the zombie king. He was mad furious since the battle goes on and yet no one was still defeated. Zombie laughed at his opponents who seemed to be struggling already. Zombie even indicated that the zombie king's injury was just a niche for him. The zombie king was offended. The two of them had a face-off and waits who will attack first. Back on Dawn and the rest, they were a bit affected by the massive explosion. Dawn hoped the battle to end, until the zombie king appeared in front of Zombie. As he attempted to counterattack Zombie, he thought of making a proposal. The zombie king thought of their battle to be endless since they're a total match. He then tried to convince Zombie to cooperate with him instead, to destroy the world together. As he pushed Zombie away, the zombie king compromised that the two of them will get a 50-50 benefit. The top of the building where Zombie landed exploded. Dawn became worried for Zombie's state, while the zombie king waits for Zombie's response to his proposal. But then, Zombie declined the offer in an instant. Zombie has no interest in ruling nor destroying the world. Back to Blackie's side. Chief think it would be too dangerous to stay. He begged for Agu and Blackie to run away immediately. Chief even convinced the two that he already saw Zombie transform and that there's no need for him to watch further since the Zombie King and Zombie had the same level of strength. But Blackie finds the Chief to be annoying. Blackie smirked and revealed that Zombie doesn't only transform once. Chief was suddenly petrified like he just heard a revelation. Zombie looked directly at the Zombie King to make sure he got it in his head and straightforwardly told him that working with the zombie king isn't worthy at all. Zombie couldn't believe the king zombie has the audacity to try and convince him by offering his half, while Chief still couldn't get over with what Blackie had said. Zombie looked down on the zombie king and assured that only the weaklings has the desire to rule and destroy the world. Zombie made a logical and humane speech, yet he wasn't heard since he's on top of the building. The zombie king was disappointed to be turned down by zombie. While Zombie just made a promise to teach him a lesson for at least the Zombie King could have humanity in him. Zombie then revealed his transformation when his zombie skin shreds. Until his skin turned into a human. He screamed on top of his lungs with his final transformation. The shocking revelation made everyone speechless and couldn't even get their eyes off on Zombie. Until Zombie became a human with deep and dark eyes. Dawn and the rest just yelled and was deeply overwhelmed to witness the full transformation. Zombie didn't say a word and stood still on top of the building. With his human eyes, he glared at the zombie king with full disgust and waits for his turn to attack. But with just a glare, the zombie king felt intimidated even though zombie only stared at him. Even the zombie king was deeply confused on that point. Back to Blackie's side. Chief was too overwhelmed at the situation that he fell asleep. But then Agu slapped him to get a grip of reality. And also, for him to witness zombie going god mode. Agu puts Chief in a position for him to witness clearly with his eyes. Agu was just too proud of their king that they all considered Zombie as a god. Zombie still hasn't said a single word. All of them couldn't get their eyes off from Zombie as he transformed into a human. No one could even comprehend how it happened nor how it was possible. Until the weather turned dark and rains. But Violet felt like the rain wasn't normal at all. The Zombie King was furious with his fragile ego. He instantly went to counterattack Zombie while asking him if he's whether a human or a zombie. As the Zombie King attempted to land his fist on Zombie's face, Zombie only glared at him. Until the raindrop stopped in midair, Zombie raises his hands. Until every limbs of the Zombie King was horrifyingly torn apart that he screamed as he felt all the agony and trauma. But Zombie still doesn't stop when the rain suddenly goes back up. It was like Zombie manipulated the gravity that every living things went floating. Dawn was terrified that even her and the rest was affected by Zombie's power. Even the ship started to float. But Zombie goes beyond with his power that even all the sea creatures started to float out of their home. Until Zombie stopped manipulating the gravity and ended up making everyone fall from midair. The Zombie King lays on the ground with only his torso. He felt the amount of pain Zombie just gave him. 
With a terrifying look on Zombie's face, he assured that he's not just a king, but a god. After their long fight at the city, a giant cyclone built up at their location. Dawn was so shocked after seeing the giant cyclone and some of the sea creature falls down at the city. On the other side, President and Lanky falls from the ground after gravitational effect worn off. Zombie was calmly standing in front of them while he's trying to figure out some things. President was struggled to get herself up while asking Zombie. All of a sudden a whale falls from the sky that landed at Hobson building. Both of the professor was so shocked as they saw a whale fall from the sky. The zombie king can't believe that this was possible while his limbs are gone. The professor asks Faye if he's seen a zombie king like this but he refuses to seen anything like this before. Because of zombie king's physique, he manages to stand up without using his hands. He then used his regeneration skill. His hands simultaneously regeneration after all. He was so mad while he's trying to be little zombie. He said that zombie can't kill him since the zombie kings are basically unkillable life forms and even if zombie tries to cut him into pieces, his regeneration can help him up. Zombie made a pale reaction after hearing those words. He then cast again his gravitational manipulation. Then Zombie King flew close to Zombie after being manipulated him. Zombie chokes him after pulling him up. Zombie lifts him up while choking after saying that Zombie King might misunderstanding the meaning of death. Zombie King struggles to get out from Zombie's hand while being choked. He keeps trying to pull out himself while Zombie asking him if he need to physically destroy someone for them to die. Then Zombie glared at him while pale reaction. Zombie King screams in agony after Zombie doing something at him. However, ships have been moving to take their position to target the city. Cyclones had been rampaging the sea due to Zombie's doing. Zombie King struggling while screaming ancient out of nowhere. Somehow a robotic figure was planning into something. He orders to shoot the ship that Fei was using. He called this as 1351 encirclement of the sixth time at ending human civilization. Going back at Zombie. He's still casting an eminent energy at Zombie King to kill him from his inner soul. Zombie King was almost losing his conscious. The ships also successfully destroyed to avoid bombing the area. Meanwhile, Zombie looks different from Zombie King's perspective and sees him like a god after being beaten up by Zombie. Zombie King slowly losing his grip for his life and struggling so hard from Zombie's power. Snaps happen. After this, Zombie King suddenly stops on moving that probably shows losing his life. And turns out that Zombie didn't kill him physically indeed internally killed his soul since he was immortal. Zombie was holding the Zombie King on top of a building. Dawn and President Violet were shocked and wondering if it was over. Zombie lets go of him, and the Zombie King starts falling at a high distance. Zombie King's fall impact can be seen. The ground was cracked, and the Zombie King was not moving. Chief was shocked and wondering what was happening, seeing the Zombie King was not moving. Blackie said that he must have been scared to death by the third form of their king. Faye can't believe what he's seeing. The helicopter arrives. The boy is pulling Faye, saying all their coastal air defense boats are gone, so they should leave while they can because if they don't leave now, they might not be able to leave. He suddenly saw a man standing before him. He immediately stays away from Faye, a zombie. He was shocked to see zombies in front of them as they never showed themselves. Zombie stares at them seriously. They fall to the ground while trembling from fear. Zombie asks them if they will surrender by themselves or if they want to meet the zombie king. Zombie gives them one second to decide. The boy immediately surrendered. Faye trembles in annoyance while the zombie stares at him with seriousness. Just like that, Professor Jamie, who was supposed to be killed on sight, was captured alive by a zombie. President Violet wonders what's wrong with him, but Don doesn't know either. Zombie said that turning into that is too scary as he is a kind of zombie. President Violet tells Don to go and ask him, but Don refuses as she sees how scary he is. President Violet pushes her to go, and they will go to make her zombies vice president later. Don stutters while asking Zombie if he's alright, as they are about to leave now. She jumps and screams in surprise when the zombie stands and says he is hungry. Zombie said he really wants a tear-resistant shirt. Don sighed and saw that Zombie's completely passive again. Don asks him if he remembers what he did just now, so Zombie answers that he does, but it's just a little blurry. He explained that he had already lost his sense of time, but he knew that he had beaten up many weird zombies like him. But they were all too weak, so Zombies didn't bother to remember them. The boy asks Faye what's wrong when he sees him laughing by himself. He is laughing as he didn't expect that there was a being as strong as Zombie. Faye said that he would obtain a sample of the zombie's genes and create a being even stronger than him. Just like that, the zombie king created by Professor Jamie was scared to death by zombie, and the incident with Professor Jamie finally ended. Someone asks zombie if he has any problems becoming a president, and zombie says none. 
They told him to remember that being a president isn't only about being strong, but you must also be able to maintain and protect your cities. They also reminded him that his title would be revoked if he could get the city's population to be at most 10 million within the time limit. They asked the zombie which city he would like, so the zombie asks if he can have the city where he caught Professor Jamie. The H city. They argued that the H city I a deserted city, a no man's land. If he wanted to raise chickens, you must first have eggs to hatch. They nagged that even if you have eggs, you must at least have a cell. But that place doesn't have a single human hair, so how will zombies develop it? They told Zombie if his population did not meet the requirements, his position as a president will also be taken from him. But Zombie still wants that town, so they seem to agree. They have already stamped the official letter of appointment of Zombie as president. She was annoyed when she asked them where did the Bayonders Academy find this idiot as there were so many perfectly good city, and yet the zombie chose a deserted one. President Violet just sighed from the stress of the commotion. After becoming president, Zombie's single regiment army was expanded to four regiments to help protect his city. On that day, a landmark moment in history was realized. The zombie children told their mom that their new home was so grand, and they also saw a human. It is a unique sight where human soldiers assist zombies in moving into their new homes. Zombie is watching from afar. Blackie reported that all their citizens had been moved into the city as per his order. Zombie said that it was good. The zombie child was surprised when the soldiers moved upon the order of attention. The zombie kid asks his mommy if they will use the smoking metal sticks on them. The soldier announces that President Zombie's orders are equal to the orders of God and President Zombie's people are equal to their people, so the soldiers will safely escort them to their new homes. The zombie child seems to understand. They are glad to have their own city finally. Zombie said that sometimes, for a race to prosper, you don't necessarily need to wage war on others. Blackie smiles as he hears Zombie's words. He asks Zombie what they should do with Barment, as he's been hanging there for a few months. Zombie told them to leave him hanging. That day on the Zombie Town Municipal Council, Varmint is still hanging at the top of the building. He cries as he admits he was wrong. He said he would be obedient from now on and didn't want to turn into a zombie jerky. President Violet is leaning on the cracked wall with bruises on her face as she says that her enemy feels like she has two completely different personalities. Dawn, with the monster's eyes, is laughing. She told President Violet that she can still fight. President Violet gets angry and immediately disappears from her current position. She sneaks behind Dawn's back. Dawn's head suddenly twisted 360 degrees behind, and they saw President Violet. President Violet got startled in surprise. She lost her focus and stumbles in the air. She landed on her hands and asked Dawn if she was still a human. President Violet's eyes widened when she saw Dawn charging an attack toward her. President Violet jumps backward away from Dawn. Dawn shoots Violet with her gatling gun. She bursts into laughter and asks Violet if she thinks she can become a president now while firing her gun. She is laughing devil while showering Violet with bullets. President Violet dodges the bullets. She moves swiftly to avoid every bullet that is aimed at her. She is irked and glances at Dawn. She charged at a fast pace towards Dawn and told her that he better show her strongest skill. Dawn roars like a monster. Her cells are improved. President Violet attacks her with horizontal slashes. Dawn asks Violet if she's even trying and mocks her about how she can use her strongest skill when she acts like this. Violet appears on top of Dawn with her sword aimed at her. President Violet managed to cut through her shoulder down her body. Dawn seems not to feel anything as she smirks. Violet wonders why Dawn didn't dodge. Violet saw her getting regenerated as her body got pulled together again. Dawn's body regenerated completely with no scratches. President Violet jumps back away from her. She thinks this is too exaggerated and wonders what zombies did to her. Dawn asks Violet now if she's worthy of being a president yet. Dawn suddenly charges towards Violet. Dawn hits President Violet and comes flying toward the wall. Violet told Dawn they should stop there. Dawn emits a smoke after hearing Violet. She asks if Violet is okay and explains that she didn't do it on purpose. President Violet asks Dawn if she's sure she is really not a zombie even after the zombie bit her. Dawn said she was not and asked Violet if she did undergo a full body examination in the lab yesterday as everything down to the cells in her body was normal and there was no change to her body. President Violet asks her how she explains being able to turn her head 360 degrees and regenerate herself. Dawn said that she didn't know either but that she feels like she can transform as long as she wants to but she doesn't feel any different. Dawn said when she's feeling down, she can give herself some stimulants and even get stronger. Moreover, she doesn't feel any side effects despite using it for so long. Dawn calls Violet and asks if something is wrong with her seeing her get quiet. 
President Violet gets up and tells Dawn to move aside, so Dawn asks where she is going. But Violet tells her it is none of her business as she runs away at full speed. He asks President Violet where she is going, and she says she's going to H-City with annoyance on her face. President Violet runs so fast to the airplane. They fly towards their desired destination. The plane landed in the H-City. President Violet comes out of the airplane immediately while her assistant calls to wait for him. That day at the Zombie Town Municipal Council, Zombie appointed Fur to be responsible for the Azure Flower District, while Gan will be the head of the city's police department and Lang will be the head of civil administration. Zombie called on Blackie and he immediately stood up. Blackie will be responsible for the treasury of their city and from now on, all their money will be under his management and he must take account of every single cent in the zombie city treasury. President Violet suddenly barged into their meeting. She enters the room while gasping for air. Zombie asks what brings her here. Violet runs towards the zombie. Zombie said it was perfect timing as he was just about to find her to report the current situation in the city. Violet held the zombie's head and told him to open his mouth. She placed her arm in the zombie's mouth to be bitten. President Violet thanked him and said to do whatever he wished as she ran away from the room. President Violet comes out of the building. Her assistant said she was too fast. He asks President Violet if she has forgotten about that spy and reminds her not to forget that he can control people's minds seeing Violet let a zombie bite her like that. President Violet was irked as she desired a ridiculous increase in strength and the ability to reattach body parts and never die. That's why she doesn't care what zombie wants to do, even if he wants her to strip dance in the middle of the square. Meanwhile, zombie seems confused about what happened. And so Zombie began to reform and develop the city he received, and after assigning work to his subordinates, the city slowly began to function. At the Zombie Fashion Store, the Zombie Lady is welcoming customers. The Zombie Hairdresser is giving a service to his customer. Zombie Realtors are doing their job on a skyscraper. Another Zombie invites everyone to look at the new houses at the real estate opening. In the zombie driving school, zombies are learning to drive cars. Zombie examinee number 54 is being called and asks what he is doing in the passenger seat. Zombie is gazing at the town from his office. He felt at peace while sipping his coffee as he began his slow life. The paper contains zombie information. She learned that his personality was a pushover, completely without any outstanding personality traits, as if he were just another passerby. So she didn't understand why the Bayonders Academy would appoint him as a city president. He asks Inspector Chen if she has heard what the chief of the Stainless Steel Academy said and explains that he was telling the Bayonders Academy to invite Zombie to become president. Inspector Chen said that it's normal for there to be competition between Academy, and it's not as if they have never seen them slander each other. Inspector Chen explained that even without his slandering, she doesn't like this zombie person either, as he doesn't have the personality of a leader, whether he is a zombie or not. She wonders if she will know as long as she takes a look at herself. That day at the North Pole, a helicopter is flying over. A cruise landed in the place. He welcomed Professor Strange upon their arrival. Professor Strange asks if he heard that they discovered the corpse of the ancient people here. So the boy says yes, and it's a dried corpse estimated to be thousands of years old. He also said that they found it while conducting some experiments, and it's buried 500 meters into the ice, but they're trying to extract it using a crane. Professor told them to be careful not to damage the body. If it is ancient, this might be the greatest discovery in all of human civilization. The man told them to be careful and bring it up slowly. Professor Strange hopes that this will allow them to have a breakthrough in their research of the ancient ones. The other people seem like they are just watching them. As the president of the archaeological department of the academy, it is Professor Strange's first time being this nervous. They are lifting it with the crane and putting it down slowly. The ice is really big while being held by a crane. A body inside the ice can be seen. It seems like a body of an ancient woman. Professor asks if it is the real thing. Someone suddenly apprehended him. His mouth was covered, and he got his neck bitten. Professor Strange gets startled and asks who they are, as they are not part of his team. People screamed for help that day. Professor Strange fell to the ground when he was kicked. The person told them to use Professor Strange as a sacrifice. They told him to stop struggling as they only needed some blood. The man is on his serious face while the girl laughs at them. They put down the giant ice on the ground. They started to crash it, and it revealed the ancient body of the woman. The woman's naked body has started to slowly show, and the girl puts on clothes all over her. They all hail the Blood Queen. They wish the Queen a long life and everlasting youth. The Blood Queen asks if the moron zombie is still alive. The Blood Queen stands in front of them. 
The man told her that the zombie was still alive even after a thousand years. He was still as lively as ever. But for some reason, after he wiped out human civilization last time, he mingled with the humans and even began rebuilding his clan. The girl told the Blood Queen to be careful while she assisted her. The Blood Queen's eyes got serious as she recalled Zombie. She is sure that she will not lose to him again. It is a sunny day at the Guangzhou Province Academy headquarter. Zombie is sipping his delicious coffee when someone calls for him. Several people are gathering inside the headquarters. A man is screaming while doctors assist him. President Violet asks what that thing is as she has never seen anything like it while the woman says it doesn't look like a zombie either. According to the database, he is a member of the exploration team from the next province. He was found waiting in the North Pole, and their province's archaeology head, who was with him, is now missing. The database said he was an ordinary person, but he injured two of their presidents when they tried to catch him. President Violet thought that they needed to invite a professional. The car arrives at the destination. Zombie comes out of the vehicle. They greet him as their president, Zombie. Inside the office, a zombie comes in as he is called to. Several people are glancing at him. Someone greets him and stretches his hand. He introduces himself as President Ying from the Iron Club Academy. President Ying asks if he was the one who caught Professor Jamie, so Zombie says yes and says hello to him. Zombie walks past him. Ying smirks, thinking that Zombie is just another psychic, while Zombie is happy that he can now shake hands with humans and is halfway to his goal. The man said that just by looking at him, he could tell he was a weakling and wondered why anyone would make him president, while the other seemed scared. The man asks where did Chief Gang go? Chief Gang trembles, thinking that if he had known the zombie was coming, he would have just stayed at home. They are discussing something at the lab. The doctor asks Zombie to look at him and asks if he recognizes what kind of monster he is. Zombie doesn't know how old he is. The doctor expects him to know this. Zombie saw that the man had bite marks on his neck, and he got startled. President Violet asks Zombie what did he find out. The man suddenly growled and gets quiet upon seeing the zombie. Zombie said it was interesting as he found out it was the doing of the blood tribe. Light suddenly flashes before the zombie, and the people around were winded away by a strong wind. The man trembles while the zombie is beside him. Zombie could have sworn that his kind, the blood people were extinct already. The people flew when a strong wind from a zombie winded them. President Ying bumps into the wall and groans from the pain. They ask what happened and why President Zombie exploded. President Violet and Dawn are quiet while ducking on the ground. Zombie could have sworn he killed every one of the blood people already. But now he understood and asked the man to tell him where Little Red was, the little girl who liked to poison him. The man burst into tears and said he didn't know anything and only became a vampire yesterday. Zombie emanates steam from his body. President Ying is sweating profusely and wondering if a zombie is an insignificant psychic. Chief Gang was startled as he knew he should have stayed home. Zombie walks away from the lab. They ask him what's wrong and what did he find out. President Violet asks what blood tribe he was talking about just now, but Zombie tells them everyone should be more careful these next few days. He is on his serious face as he thinks of the blood tribe. President Violet and Dawn are shocked to see him being serious. Zombie told them he forgot what he was about to say, and everyone fell on the ground feeling ridiculed. President Violet aggravates and asks if can Zombie's brain not function normally after he reverts to his normal estate. Zombie told them he would be sure to remember next time. While President Ying still thinks that, in the end, the zombie is a psychic. Zombie glances at his back, and they got startled when they saw him look at them. On the other hand, the Blood People told the Blood Queen that this was their home. They ask what does she think. The Blood Queen seems to be annoyed. They sat on the ground when suddenly a coin rolled towards them. The man asks if they didn't say that the cities under the government are all managed very well and wonders why beggars are still in the streets. The man picks up the coin while his eyes sparkle from seeing the money. The Blood Queen got annoyed and aggravates why they even bother reviving her when they have already fallen to this level. The girl burst into tears and said she didn't know how hard their lives have been in the past 1000 years. Back when the Blood Queen turned into a dried corpse by a zombie, all of them could do nothing but watch from afar. After that, he began exterminating their tribe, and to survive and escape from his clutches, they had to play dead. And then, they didn't dare expose themselves for 1,000 years under the threat of zombies. No matter where they were, they hid as far as they could from humans and zombies. She told the queen while crying that they hadn't left this tiny alley for 1,000 years, and Lantling had even turned into an idiot. The Blood Queen said that it was useless even if they revived her. She wasn't a zombie's opponent back then. Now, she can't even touch a single hair on his body. Lanling told her that she was wrong, and they revived her because they had obtained a critical piece of information recently. 
they found someone that could help her turn invincible. The girl said it was true that the person could help her become invincible. The Blood Queen asks who it is. The man showed her a picture of a man. Several people gathered in the headquarter. The scientists are being held so that they will not be able to escape. Zombie asks why don't they just kill him. President Violet explains that they can't yet as first. They need to find all the hidden experiments and research he planned to use against them. Second, he has a lot of spies planted among them, and they want to use him to root them all out. Zombie asks what if he escapes. President Young burst into laughter and said it was impossible. How could he run when he was already locked up like that? Ying told Zombie that since he was the one who caught him, he can bring him to take a look. This is a state-of-art prison specially constructed for him. They dug up an entire mountain and the depth alone is over 3,000 meters. There are 1,500 floors and 100,000 armed guards. Even using an elevator would take 30 minutes from top to bottom. Then there are the rocket launchers, anti-aircraft guns, laser cannons, and as long as you can name it, they have it. And this is just the appetizer. A president is guarding every 100 floors. 30 presidents and two chiefs are watching over this place. Ying smirks and asks them how can the prisoner escapes with this level of security. They have also installed a bomb, and Professor Jamie is currently strapped to the bomb's detonator. The power of the explosion is more than 10,000 tons of TNT. As long as someone approaches him, the bomb will go off. Ying boasts that even if someone manages to free him, they die in the explosion. Even if a god descends, all he can bring back is a corpse which makes the zombies sweat in nervousness. Zombie, in his basic state, felt secondhand shame from seeing the deranged actions of the humans. Meanwhile, they are watching Ying via a smartphone in an alley far away. The Blood Queen and her people are shocked to hear all those tight securities. The Blood Queen got annoyed to know that humans tied the man to a self-detonating bomb. Ying told President Violet that Inspector Chen had gone to President Jiang's city for an inspection and asked if she wouldn't warn his little boyfriend. President Violet gets annoyed and asks why he is even telling her this. Ying said that Chief Gang told Inspector Chen that President Zombie built a city for Zombie. Whether President Zombie is a zombie or not, he doesn't care. Since Ying only recognizes the straw, President Violet seems annoyed at him. On a warm day in town, the zombie is happy that human cities are so prosperous as he walks along the street. Professor Jamie is tied to a self-detonating bomb. A food server is walking outside of their prison. He bursts into tears thinking it's all over for them. Faye is determined that he will obtain the zombie's genes. He asks what Faye is talking about, as they are going to get executed soon. Faye said no since before they obtain all of his research, they will never kill him as before they were caught. He has already instructed people to send his research data to a place that even he doesn't know. Faye is planning to make them regret keeping him alive. He explained that the zombie was too strong and stopped talking about how to get his genes, and even if they had his genes, it would still be nearly impossible to create something stronger than him. Faye said it's simple as long as they can obtain a strong enough vessel to carry the zombie's genome, it will be much easier. He told Faye not to talk about that at first since this place has the highest security, they are just ordinary people and ask how to escape. Faye seems to be in deep thought about what he said. The food server is walking outside their prison cell. The food delivery robot is set to go. The robot is coming towards him. It is feeding Faye with the food it is carrying. He was startled to see Faye's action. Faye chews on his food. He continues to chew it while inside his mouth cavity. There is a wiretap behind his tooth. Faye is quiet and serious for a moment. He asks someone where is the zombie king's corpse being kept right now. The man answered that it was being held in Dr. Yin's lab on the 200th floor. Two chiefs are guarding it right now. Faye said it was good and ordered him to follow his instructions and guard their vessels properly. Meanwhile, the zombie is walking in the street. He notices someone is calling on his phone. President Violet told Zombie that there was something he should know. She said Chief Gang from before ratted out him to Inspector Chen, and he said Zombies created a city for zombies. Right now, Inspector Chen is heading toward the zombie's city to take a look and should already be on her way. Inspector Chen is the auditor of President Violet's province, and her job is to keep a watch on the president's lifestyle and behaviors. If she finds out a zombie is a zombie, he will immediately be fired. Zombie is sweating profusely as he wonders if Inspector Chen would believe if he said he was a human. President Violet yells at him not to act like she didn't go to his city and see all the zombies running around. She told Zombie that he knows better than anyone else what he is. Zombie got quiet for a moment. He screams, saying it's over. He wonders what he should do now and what he can do. He notices something. He saw some makeup by the window. That sunny day, Inspector Chen arrived. The plane heading to the city H has been prepared for her. 
Inspector Chen said that someone with such a weak personality is unsuitable to be a president and she would find a reason to fire this zombie person. If you found this video interesting don't forget to like comment and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Stay awesome, goodbye.